Now, they'll tell you that bone broth isn't a good thing to drink 24-7. I tell you they're wrong. These are the same people putting fluoride in your water, chemtrails in your air, and you're going to trust them over me. Absolutely laughable. Hillary Clinton is a goddamn demon. <laughs> <laughs> you really do the voice well. Like, if I close my eyes, it's Alex Jones is whi- whispering sweet nothing. She's a telepathic vampire. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? A telepathic space yeah. vampire sucking, a soul like, sucking vampire or something? You know, the lizard people actually exist. And you're just like, where do we jump to this point? Like, how did we get here? What if there are it's, lizard people? I've got a couple things I'm interested in. Uh, one of which is a conspiracy theory mm. that I looked into this week and I couldn't get enough of because it was so, so important. That well, I'll just get into it. So my entire this conspiracy purports that Long John Silver's, the fast food seafood restaurant, has never been about seafood. It's been a marijuana laundering drug business the entire time. You have so, my attention. So buckle up. This is important. First of all, ask yourself: Have you ever seen a very crowded Long John Silver's? <laughs> <laughs> Have oh. I seen, have. You haven't. You're lying. You've, <laughs> you've, there's never been. I. There used to be a Long John Silver's around here. It was the only fast food place that I was like, oh, I can go there because there's no line. And I'm in a hurry because I prefer no Captain one, D's. No, everyone does. It's easier yeah, yeah. to go to the moon than to fake a crowded Long John Silver's. I've heard. <laughs> See, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, so, so with that in mind, there's never been a huge line at a Long John Silver's ever. So, and I've got the whole epic written out. So, <laughs> so, so the history is, is that Long John Silver started in 1969 in Lexington, Kentucky from a man named Jim Patterson. And he w- wanted to have a seafood restaurant, a popular seafood restaurant. That's what he wanted to do. And he wanted to do it fast food because no one had kind of stormed, you know, that, that, no one had done that yet. And so he's like, all right, 1969, fucking we're starting our seafood fast food <laughs> restaurant in Lexington, Kentucky. Never quite takes off. Meanwhile, there was a moonshining family only a few miles away that had made a fuck ton of money during Prohibition. But after Prohibition ended, they were struggling. And they were kind of, you know, their their gang hold on the area, gang hold, who knows how big it was in Lexington or in the surrounding areas. They, you know, it was maybe they, they were starting to lose their hold because income wasn't coming in as quickly. The guy's name was Johnny Boone. And Johnny Boone was was the descendant of those moonshiners, the, the child of them, and he wanted to get his criminal enterprise back up. And so he decided, I'm going to get into marijuana. And so he started the Cornbread Mafia out of Lexington, Kentucky, which was all about bringing weed in, selling it, and making a bunch of money. And they did that for years. And eventually it got to the point where it's like, well, we can't launder this through little you know, uh, locally owned gas stations and shit or uh, laundromats anymore. It's not going to work. We need to find someone we can launder this through. Who do they find? Jim Pat- Patterson, the owner of Long John Silver's. They go, Jim, we got a lot of money. We know that your little seafood restaurant is struggling. How about we help you expand a little bit? And so for the next 20 years, <laughs> Long John Silver's is expanding across the country. None of them have ever been busy. None of them are <laughs> serving are serving fish. It's all Johnny Boone's weed money coming in, laundering through John, Long John Silver's, and then they get it back. And so they both agreed to it. Jim Jim Patterson is exploding. Long John Silver's is expanding all over the place. Meanwhile, everybody's saying, ah, it's not a very busy place. Food's not very good. That's what people are saying. Ask anyone. And... <laughs> <laughs> and so the pot is making so much money and Long John Silver's is spreading so quickly that Johnny Boone becomes the godfather of grass in the South in the 80s. And so in the mid 80s, the FBI starts looking into Long John Silver's and into Johnny Boone and they catch Johnny Boone between 87 and 91. You know, that's when the investigation was in 91 is when they finally nabbed him up. And so they nab him up. They put him in prison. But the cornbread mafia doesn't want to stop. They're they're rolling. They've got lots of pot money. They've got so much pot money that they 
they sponsored commercials for local politicians going against heroin because heroin was getting big at the time and they wanted the public perception of heroin to be heroin's evil, heroin's bad, heroin will give you AIDS because, you know, the, the 80s AIDS scare and associating anything with AIDS in the 80s was a death sentence. And so they were associating heroin with AIDS as much as possible. And that did successfully for a little while in certain regions slow down heroin consumption. And what did that do? Boost up marijuana consumption and that helps the cornbread mafia a lot <laughs> and so the the crux of this is that long john silvers has never ever been popular they've never independently turned a profit and it was the cornbread mafia initially led by johnny boone that is responsible for the few remaining long john silvers and look this up look at how many locations they've closed you know why in the last couple of decades, why marijuana they so legalization many is because marijuana legalization and the dissolve the dissolving of much of the cornbread mafia. So all of these things, I'm not saying to believe it. I'm just saying everything I just said is absolute fact. <laughs> yeah, none of that's true. <clears throat> no, um, that's true. I read it online. The thing about the restaurant not being crowded is true, and that's the that foundation of all of it. Well, the real problem is that fried fish isn't very healthy and that's not what people are after and there's a competitor called captain d's which is just superior i don't know if you've ever had the deviled crab at captain d's but i no, always... i think i think my my six generation long weed smuggling <laughs> laundering train is a little more occam's razor <laughs> i prefer the uh i prefer the dinder airport because i've okay. watched like some 20 minute youtube videos about that it is fascinating uh, and, um, every time I've ever been in the Denver airport, I like, uh, I tried to be observant and see some of the things I had learned in the videos and, uh, they, it, I'm sure you're going to cover this, but it's, it's way overbuilt. Um, yeah. some, it's, 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 it, it, I find, I find that one very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's super interesting. Did you have a vote on that one? I've Tell never me. heard either of these. So I've never heard either of these as conspiracy theories. So no, either would be great. Okay. So I'll do the Denver airport one then. So uh, have I, I know Kyle has because I you picked me up there once. Uh, have you flown through the Denver airport, Filthy? I don't remember. Probably it's Denver, Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the Denver airport was made in 1995, uh, and Denver already had a functional airport. It was it worked just fine, but they spent billions and bill I'm doing uh, the Denver airport conspiracy now, Woody. Thank you. Uh, so the airport itself is insane insanely big it is uh 33,531 acres 52.4 square miles and its longest runway is 16,000 feet it puts other airports to fucking shame with how big it is and how much space it takes up before it was constructed there were a lot of fully finished buildings five of them that they had on that area and they they buried them all underground and they they just left them there. They left them all under there. They said that they weren't built, built correctly, and so they put them underneath the structure is what their explanation was. And these were five fully formed, like a network that was underneath where the airport is. Keep in mind, this is an enormous airport. It's literally the biggest space under an airport in the country by a lot. Uh, that was one. This is one thing that you know. I'm just setting the the stage for what made people kind of conspicuous of this whole thing. Uh, something that and it, this was featured on 2010's version of Jesse Ventura's hit show Conspiracy, mm -hmm. and he confirms everything I'm about to say. And <laughs> uh, the Freemason thing. Do you guys know what Freemasons are? Yes, I, I could Perfect. use an explanation. It's basically like an elite group that a lot of people contend. Uh, Kind of like the Illuminati, where it, it, they, it they have, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's kind of lumped into that same mythology or, you know, assertion. Many of our founding of the, fathers were Freemasons. People, yeah, founding fathers, they have a, a disproportionate amount of power. They can exert their influence, not necessarily directly. They're like a deep state, quote unquote, where they can manipulate powers that be in order to get their way. But they are staying in the shadows is what sure, people sure. would assume. And so the Freemasonry has a huge part at that airport. The capstone of the airport has the uh, compass and uh, sextant or whatever the fuck that thing is, a uh, compass and uh, something else. Sorry. Uh, did I write it down? I did not. Well, it's got the Freemason insignia on the capstone there. And it was sealed. The capstone was sealed uh, on March 19th, 1994, before it was opened. And on it, it says to the people of Colorado in 2094. 
Oh, a square and compass Freemason symbol. That's what it was. And underneath that are two Grand Masters listed of the Freemasons. It also says uh, uh, a list, and it has New World Airport Commission. And people don't know what that is. But it says it has the Freemason symbol. It's the capstone of the building. It's got two of the Grand Masters listed. And it's got New World Airport Commission. If you don't know, New World Order is the thing that they always say those people are building. They're building a New World Order where they're going to sit behind the shadows and conduct us like puppets. Uh, that kind of turned people off. The next thing were the statues. So if you've ever been inside the Denver airport, you'll know that the aesthetics of it are fucking weird. Yep. This is something that I noticed before I knew this was a conspiracy, where I'm like, I've never been in an airport getting my bags where there are gargoyles staring down at me all over the place. It is, it's a fucking strange aesthetic there. And so there are gargoyles all over the place on the, uh, in the airport, which is a Masonic symbol, I guess. Uh, they have a 30-foot horse out front that's blue, has glowing red eyes, yep. and they call it Blucifer. Because they think it's a demon horse. They use that, you know, the... the um, I saw it. The Freemasons do the whole Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse thing. And so they're like a poem or some shit under there. They think that that was a hint at that. Uh, people say it's cursed. And there have been reports of people having panic attacks and like passing out nearby the horse. And the horse itself was commissioned by an artist. Uh, filthy, I'm presenting this. How dare you though, snicker? I, I, I have, <laughs> this is serious shit, man. <laughs> I'll zip it up. Do you think I would joke about about a magic horse out front of the Denver airport? If you do, <laughs> you don't even you don't even know me. <laughs> but uh, but shut up. So <laughs> so this thirty two foot horse, as it was being commissioned and sculpted, it actually killed its creator. The head slipped off, gashed open his femoral artery, and he bled out all over the head of this horse that is now sitting out front of the Denver International Or Airport. was he sacrificed? You're reading my mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's also the problem of the murals. In uh, So a lot of airports will have that aesthetic, you know, hey, come look at uh, Atlanta. We've got, a, you know, cool, neat stuff. And like pictures of that. This is just a big mural, you know, multiple murals telling like a story. And the story is not very normal for what you would consider in an airport where you normally see like birds or like, you know, a nature scene. It's showing like predictions where, you know, you got, uh, they, they say it's about uh, the Germans taking over again because the, the first one is a guy who looks very Nazi-esque in a gas mask and there are people, you know, struggling and everything. And he's clearly being, you know, assertive. He's going to take shit down. Uh, there's another one where, uh, there is a Boy Scout who is clearly representing the U.S. handing his, his weapon to a Bavarian child, clearly symbolizing Germany. You know, not a, not a peace agreement, but handing the weapon to the, the German. Uh, people do not like that. There was, uh, there's another one of a devil jumping out of a suitcase. There's one, uh, there is either, it's either a statue or, a, or no, it's a mural. There's a mural of Anubis, the Egyptian god of death. Uh, there's one of children gathered around a knife. Uh, there's kids in front of a burning building. There's, yeah, those were all. And then America submitting to Germany by giving weapons to the Bavarian kid. And another thing they mention, flipping my page there, hmm. is that uh, the runways look like a swastika if you zoom out and look at it. You know, you got a nice looking swastika shape there. And at first I thought, well, of course there wouldn't be curbs in a runway. You're setting planes off. And I thought, no, no, no. That makes too much sense. And so they're all straight. They look like swastikas. The other thing that I mentioned early on, if you recall, are the underground bunkers that people assert uh, are under this thing. And it's not even an assertion. It's known that there are bunkers under there. Uh, when there was like some missile threat from North Korea during Obama's administration, he was mysteriously flown to, to Denver. Oddly enough, that it's odd that he would go to Denver. People speculate or postulate that this might be a place to uh, uh, house undesirables in some sort of apocalyptic scenario where no one would know. Or they say that part of it might be to keep the elites safe in the event that something uh, were to happen that was calamitous. Well, it's the full final, spectrum, really, for these, these. Full spectrum. They're sure. multi-purpose rooms down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. 
the five buildings were completed and buried intact, totally functional down there. Uh, there's also the 2007 incident that people believe that there is something electromagnetic happening underneath that building in one of those uh, finished buildings because 14 windshields on planes sp sp spontaneously broke on the same date at the same time in 2007 and it set the whole airport back and there was no explanation for it given. Uh, there's also the 2012 uh, Aztec apocalyptic insignia above a couple of the um, above a couple of the murals uh, on one of the little statues they have there. They have A U A G on it, which are uh, chemical symbols, and they believe that that could be kind of a hint. You know, it's it's gold and silver, but they say that it could be a hint towards uh, Australia antigen toxin, which is a weapon of choice for the Illuminati. So it yes. could be a hint. Yes. Yes. You act like I went to one site and, and read all this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, the Queen of England is also buying up properties surrounding this very airport. So I put you this. Gentlemen, is it more likely <laughs> that an architect or a team of architects made a building too big and an <laughs> artist with a bad sense of style was conscripted to decorate it? Or... Is it more likely that covert Germans working out of Argentina <laughs> built the Denver airport to make sure that there would be a place to hide when it all goes tits up? Well, option number two, I guess. I'm stunned. Compared to, <laughs> compared to these other presentations, I mean, I thought a lot of these other presentations, but they're very well done. But this one, <laughs> this one I think takes the cake for me. There's almost no way to refute this. Like, uh, nothing is even able to be challenged. It's so clearly laid out step by step. Taylor, you don't know this, but while you were talking, I put on the big screen all the different mur murals that Terrifying. you were describing. It, yeah, they're seriously fucked. They're, they're not good murals for an <laughs> airport. Have, that much is fair. I'm like, but well, like, there are gargoyles looking at you. Airport, right? Like, I've been to JFK and LaGuardia. I've been to LAX. I've been to Vegas and Denver and, and, and Atlanta. And, and no all, Nazis. I they all They often have motifs right you know if you're, if you're in like the southwest they often have uh, a lot of native american stuff and fucking adobe looking shit and you know you you go up north and there's all kinds of like aviation stuff that's bizarre no yeah. other airport has that yeah, like here was, in atlanta we've got weird. you know sometimes it's a bit like it's like a local museum a little bit of local history and flavor sometimes it's it's aeronautic history specifically you know that yeah. makes sense and that's I could bizarre just... Well, I mean, the Illuminati or the Freemasons, whoever it is who are behind this, I mean, clearly had the same thought. They wanted a little bit of their local culture portrayed in the airport. I mean, oh. they were they, that was what they weren't willing to compromise on. Sure, I mean, the shadow government, the hidden secret, like, puppet strings they're pulling, but not here, not giving up the tradition of the airport reflecting the local culture. That was See? not something they were willing to hide, not something that's an American value so deep that they so, weren't willing to so compromise. Deep. There'd be a bunch of John Denver shit in there or something, right? Like, like what the fuck is that? Uh, this one that I linked to. I don't think to, John Denver's from Denver. No, he? but he sings the song. That's all I care about. Oh. <laughs> this, this, uh, the one that I linked here, which ignore the InfoWars uh, banner in the bottom left, that's clearly like an evil stormtrooper oh. with a machine gun and a sword stabbing a white dove. The symbol and, of peace. And Killing in the a background, perpetual. In the background, there are perpetual women holding dead babies and rubble. Yeah, it's it's like the god of death or the god of war is what it looks like, perpetuated. That guy yeah. looks like a Nazi to me. Like he, yeah, he, mean, he, a bit. Yeah, yeah, a soldier for sure. Like he's war, if anything. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, Kyle, do you like know that one? gun? Is that a gun that you can identify? It's made to look like an AK-47. Okay. Yeah, it, it was... Uh, I've never given it any thought, and I looked into it, and it was very weird. But it's just... It, I mean, first of all, this is stone-cold retarded. If you actually... Like, <clears throat> you got to be stone-cold retarded to, to believe in a conspiracy like this. But also... Uh, and guess what? Like, when I was reading about it, all it took was, like, 
five seconds to to undo everything that I just claimed. I just right. didn't want to start with any of that. It was like, well, they were trying a new baggage system to expedite <laughs> people's travel, and it didn't end up working. So now it's abandoned, and they have a traditional baggage system. It's like, oh, no, no, I don't think so, lady. I think <laughs> that, it's, uh, that there are electromagnetic pulses. you know. And then those uh, 14 aircraft, uh, they were inspected by engineers or whoever, you know, uh, aeronautical engineers, whoever would do it, I don't know. And they were like, yeah, this is clearly caused by, you know, uh, rubble or something yeah. smashing into it. You, you know, the there were very high winds there. on that Show day. me the pig man. What's undeniable, though, is someone has a bad sense of art. Yeah, all this, yeah. Is, like the gargoyles, the murals, that big, scary blue horse with the with the, the fiery eyes. <laughs> These are awesome. arguably <laughs> the worst aesthetic choices <laughs> for an airport. Like, you're, are you trying to put people on edge? But yeah. because, I think like that brings tourism, right? Like, doesn't this type of shit, like, is, is this something that people are going to come and view? Like, this is hype for this. It's Why an are airport. we discussing this? It's an airport hype. for tourism. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But here we are I'm going to about Denver. This. Where are you staying? Nah. <laughs> Not this guy. <laughs> Not this guy. Nah. I'm going to take a quick peek, couple of pics with me and the Nazi, and then I'm back home. <laughs> staying. <laughs> Next week I'm I'm, I'm visiting LaGuardia. <laughs> I've flown through this airport, but only as a kid. I don't remember any of this. But now I I'm want to go buy back. a nine dollar beer in every airport across the country. I looked at the swastika and showed it to everyone too. I went to Google Maps and showed them that, and it does kind of look like a swastika. I see it, but as someone like who Such whatever the little flying I do, you want to take off and land into the wind, and that's why they have like crosses kind of you know so that regardless of the wind direction you can probably go pretty much into it yeah that the swastika thing was the silliest part arguably because <laughs> it was like what would you think a runway would look like like a bunch of straight lines going outward like the sun like a curve here or there like, no, it, it's gonna <laughs> be asterisk. if there is a shape that shows up at an airport arguably the swastika is the most logical one it, right? it's Nobody's like making a... like a yin yang peace sign airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hilarious to me that like part of this is so presumably this is they're so either secure in this or so necessary that the the, the conspirators are are flagging this. They put the whole it right point on of our money, man. That's how they keeping, work. Right? Like the idea of like keeping something secret, but you're being as blatant as you can is such a bizarre juxtaposition of like how you think about that. Like, you're trying to hide something? Well, I'm going to put symbols that reveal this all over the fucking place. Seems really, you know, it's, it's yeah, funny that it's, you fix it. Yeah. It seems like you'd be, like, teasing it, you know? Like, you would have to be the most ballsy motherfucker to be like, yeah, <laughs> we're building it. We're building it in Denver, where they already have an airport that's fine. And guess what? It's going to be the biggest one out there. And guess what? We're putting fucked up murals and gargoyles in it. Why? Because they'll never suspect a creepy airport of actually being creepy. Right. No. Yeah. No, yeah, that, it is, that was an interesting one. Like a lot, like, clearly it's retarded, but it's interesting the stuff people read into this and the fervor that some people will express on something as minute as whether or not the Denver airport has buildings underneath it. Like who could possibly, well, I, I ask who could possibly care. We're talking about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. That Dude. horse does not make me want to fly. That horse is amazing. It's cool outside of like a rock climbing or a paintball course, but it's, <laughs> it's, it shouldn't be at the airport. It should like, be Daddy, inside this is my the... first flight. What's that? It belongs in a laser tag arena. Yeah, it really, that's the kind of thing. Or on like a uh, Double Dare 2000, something like that is where that belongs. Do they like dress up like any, any of the flights that fly out of there? Like sometimes like, you know, the stewardesses or whatever, and they're, they're like, running around in like the fucking horse costume like that's like they do it all like kids you need to buckle your seatbelts or the horse from hell takes you down you know like i want to see like i would love to see like they should have art from that and probably local artists will probably be inspired by this of like the horse pulling down planes or something like just like this is such a great i, I just love that image like that image is incredible it is a very and, cool aesthetically pleasing statue in the context of the statue itself not of like outside an airport yeah, it's both totally bizarre. Like this is clearly what some of the, the hype of this is about is how bizarre this is to have at this type of thing. Like airports yeah. are yeah, yeah. Airports are dull and uneventful and safe and comforting. Why is there a fucking glowing red devil horse in front of this one? Why is there a, a picture of kids holding weapons standing by a burning building, holding yeah. a knife or whatever? Like that 
I don't know. That doesn't seem to go very well with Wetzel's pretzels. <laughs> right. I was curious. But, you said it was the biggest airport. Um, it is by land. That's the major. Yeah, that, that, that's place. the conspiracy part is that they bought way more land than was needed for it. Mm. Yeah, it's the sixth busiest by people. Yeah, like Atlanta's the busiest, I think. I think Atlanta's number one, but it's not nearly as big as Denver as far as area. I. Uh, yeah, you're right about Atlanta being the busiest in terms of people. It, my site doesn't have land. On it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to need a source on that. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. Tell us if you guys want this conspiracy shit to be a recurring bit, because I think it's entertaining and engaging and interesting to hear the things people believe, especially the like, sillier ones like this. Like, this is something like one of the conspiracy rabbit holes. Like, I keep trying to go down, but I can't find anything good for it. So, like, Antarctica. What the mm. fuck is going on down there? And why if that's you so like there there are military bases down there. Like okay. lots of countries have military bases down there. And if you show up in Antarctica, they will kill you. They will shoot you in the head. They'll like as you're like if you just start if you just take a boat to Antarctica, get off and start walking around, they will kill you. Like you I didn't know I did not know about this. Yeah. I didn't know about this at all and I was are like, you, well, I, what the fuck?" What's going on? Is now? that first of all? It, did you get that from a good source? I, I didn't know that. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, it came to me in a dream. I, <laughs> <laughs> He's got my vote. <laughs> now I know. Get, uh, That'd be the worst it, source I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's like no, there's like this is like not. Like I saw some like the the conspiratorial part is like oh there's a uh, something under the ice out there and there's like an underground uh, civilization or the remains of Atlantis that kind of thing or whatever maybe not Atlantis maybe I'm making that maybe. up maybe but like the part that's not really debated is like yeah you cannot go to Antarctica like you can't go there you they'll they'll shoot you yeah so uh, I've heard of people uh, I, I don't know if it's immediately they just <laughs> execute you from what I've heard they're like leave get off um because you can't privately make your way to antarctica uh because there's like it, there's some weird treaty with antarctica it's called the i forget the word for it essentially no nation can place ownership over it or mm -hmm. like it's all uh, scientific research place effect yeah it's all scientific research which but is the reason there's law that, that, they but that implies there's no law there technically so I, I think they're gonna have a hard time arresting me under any real I, yeah, I, maybe I, I, maritime I law is maritime i don't law think law? it's illegal I, I think it's a very gray area. They're just like, get out, essentially. They consider me a pirate uh, if I like grab my uh, my retarded Malamute and started sledding deep into the, <laughs> the Antarctic <laughs> center. Uh, you and wouldn't search. be sledding deep. <laughs> Look, he's a big <laughs> boy, goddammit. He, he is dip. strong. He has the power of three normal dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's true. He has three no dog loud, power. No loud noises, though. Um, <laughs> so the conspiracy around Antarctica begins with World War II. Um, <laughs> There, <laughs> there uh, was a German research base in Antarctica called Camp something, rather, I forget, but some number designation. Anyway, after the war was over, in 1947, they sent a admiral by the name of Admiral Byrd to Antarctica in something called Operation High Jump, where he was sent with, I think, 20 men total to just, like, reconnoiter, investigate whatever the Germans were doing down there to uh, check out their facilities. And whenever they got back, uh, they were all given a gag order and the Medal of Honor. Um, and that that's it. <laughs> so They were, they were all for, given a gag order and the Medal of Honor? All of them were given the Medal of Honor? They, they, were, they were placed on, like, a 48-hour debrief, if I recall correctly. They were ordered to never speak about what they found, which that part's, you know, probably pretty standard to yeah. most, you know, military reconnoiter order yeah, operations. I think you did. I think what? they stopped Hitler from being able to acquire alien technology down there, and they they brought it home. Now we're on the right path. I, I, don't, I don't think I don't think Hitler. <laughs> I think Hitler was down there. Get I. So so my made favorite Antarctica. My favorite conspiracy theory, the ones the, the one that I crave to be real, is the ancient civilizations one. The one, and and when they lay out the timeline of the Earth's life, you're like, oh shit, this this one does kind of make a bit of sense, right? Like Atlantis, because we, they're like, yeah. We've only been here for such a short period of time, like our civilization, like the last 6,000 years that we've actually recorded and can remember more or less. And the the planet's been habitable and we've been humans like we are for, for a very long time. Like we could have easily peaked and like been like pyramid building and then lost that. For, and then 50,000 years went by. We went we resorted back to like 
hunter gathering people who don't even understand agriculture. And then we could have done it three or four times in the amount of time there, there is, there's just no evidence for it. Right. And, and so that's when you got to look to places like, like maybe Antarctica, maybe like, like, wasn't that a tropical place a long, long time ago, probably predating human, um, humans. But I know at some point it was like, maybe closer yeah, to where all Australia that shit, is over like enough millions of years, all that shit cyclical. Right. With like, because well, like the, the well, you had Pangea or something, right? Where everything was one giant megacontinent and then it broke up. But for yeah. a long time, I think Antarctica was more of a tropical <clears throat> thing, like like in the Australia area ish. If there was something that like changed in elevation, we would have found that under the seas by now, or no? Because I guess that we we really haven't been. I don't think we've we charted the everything. seas very well. Uh, what do you mean by change in elevation? Like if there was like if it was like oh there was this uh, Atlanta I, that's the only one I know so I keep saying Atlantis oh it used to be here and then the water levels changed a million years ago and now so it's that, deep under the sea or something. That's actually fairly common. Um, not just in like ancient civilizations like the Greek city of man I, I know all this stuff until I'm asked about it. There was a Greek <laughs> city near the coast uh, that was like this sprawling. Um, uh, landscape that was flooded in i forget when that's supposedly the inspiration for stories of atlantis uh there's also one off the coast of mm. what's the country that gets hit by tsunamis all the time it's not japan southeast Asia. Indonesia? i think indonesia um there was a city that was built in like the 12 1300s that had gone completely underwater and what was wild is a couple years ago when they got hit with their last tsunami this place has been underwater for hundreds of years when the water drew back before the wave for the first time the entire city like this underwater city with these statues and buildings the footage of it's wild that's really uh, cool the people, I'm the people who took the that. footage were having a terrible time <laughs> but <laughs> I, uh, I really like the idea of ancient forgotten technologies that might differ yeah, from cool. ours greatly enough that that they would be cool and interesting and maybe something could be discoverable i think that Baghdad battery shit is bullshit i don't give a goddamn it's just, it, it, it was probably a it was probably a sex toy. They were putting that thing on somebody's clit to like. I don't, make it I don't know what that is. Your bag, uh, they they, f- they found these like primitive like uh, makeshift batteries. It's like a clay pot with um, I think you got like an ass an acidic solution and maybe a copper tube or something like that. And and maybe there's another metal that's involved. But in any case, it's it it could form an ancient battery. You could make an electrical charge. And uh, but but they're not powering laptops back then with that thing. They're they're, they're fucking like sticking their dicks in it because it feels yeah. Weird. They're they're shocking each other for fun. Yeah, I I. I that's probably like an uh, a, a, I could imagine a, a religious ritual where they use science to like reinforce religion the way that uh, remember in um, what's that awesome Mel Gibson movie um, the, the Apocalypto when the, yeah. they know the eclipse is coming and the priest kind of looks over at the head honcho like yeah it's coming and and by priest he's like an he's an, he's, a, he's an astronomer like from a thousand years ago and he's just like here it comes and so the king is like. Ba, 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 ba. the sun disappears and they're like holy shit the boss made the sun. <laughs> and then he's like and come back like as soon as the priest gives him the go ahead nod for that and it's like you can imagine how you're gonna get in line for a man who does something like that like like a guy who can make the sun like like, like yeah. disappear and come back mm-hmm. the oh yeah if, like that's magic someone knowing that 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 the sun is going they wouldn't even think of it that way they'd never take that extra leap like because how could you know it was coming, right? Unless you understood astronomy. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. So I like was, the idea of lost civilizations and uh, uh-huh. and, and that stuff just being eaten by the the you know the the um, the, the ravages of time. Well, yeah the um, the way the the Earth's crust goes under itself <laughs> and just gets eaten over and over until there's there's no it's just gone. It's just gone. It is wild to think about like uh, buried cities. Like we build civilization on top of civilization. And think of like mm-hmm. everything that's uh, sunk underneath concepts of sunken cities from like old uh, lore, not like in the ocean, like the land gave way and there's these underground caverns. Well, there's that thing in Go- Have you seen the thing, um, the Graham Hancock stuff about the, the Gobleki Tepe uh, uh, place in Turkey? I've heard of it and it's supposed to be like a super old civilization or some people yeah, theorize he, he- that. Yeah, that, that, that Graham Hancock guy, he's been on Rogan a bunch of times. I, I, I read his books. They're good. But he thinks that uh, a comet came and uh, melted a gigantic, like Flash melted a huge ice cap and mm. flooded out this ancient civilization that existed like ten or twenty thousand years ago in Turkey. That because and they found this huge, um, you know, structure that was built there. 
and people should have been like hunter gatherers with stone tools back then and instead you you would have had to have like a civilization because somebody's got to be hunting and gathering to get ec- extra food so that you can have mm-hmm. artisans who can even make something you mm-hmm. know like that and supposedly yeah, you kind, we weren't kind of need agriculture that. so that's that's an interesting one um i don't know I, I like that stuff a lot i like i like lost mysteries and uh, oh yeah. the other one i really like is uh the idea of life being on one of the uh the moons of um saturn or jupiter maybe like under the yeah ice. the uh uh what's the one everyone says is super habitable titan uh, maybe i think titan uh, europa that sounds right you uh there's a movie about europa or, yeah what, what is it called is that is that Jupiter i think it's titan titan i think titan's the one everyone says that like it's almost habitable i don't um, want to live on any of them and no 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 and then it's it's a couple kilometers of ice at least and then and then but then you've got a warm yeah that's ocean. habitable but, but yeah. you've got a warm ocean briefly yeah. and, and i think that, i think anything's I think habitable for yeah. small amounts <laughs> very, of time very briefly i, I think that like the most ambitious scientists think that there's probably be like some amoebas or some like bacteria down there that feeds off yeah. of uh, thermal activity but nah, i really want ocean to monsters. be monsters i don't give I a shit about to that be, like, i need mermaids I need something yeah. with hands for me to really care. Like, like and it, something like, that made tools. If I get there and the fish has hands, I'm going back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, that would just confirm. It's like, oh, so somebody had a nuclear apocalypse here a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and now all the fish are peeling their kelp. Yeah, I I, I couldn't think of anything they would do with hands. Seems like a bad idea. But uh, I've been looking at a bunch of like weird sci-fi. I wanted a new sci-fi book, so I've been watching YouTube videos about various like sci-fi or authors. And I it might be an Isaac Asimov. I don't know who who wrote this one, but the premise is that aliens come to Earth and they just sort of like hover over us and there are we do try to attack them, but it like bounces off and they're like, chill. Listen, we're here to help. Um our bosses sent us here to Get you guys up to speed. You're going to join the Galactic Federation. You can't look at us, though. We're rough looking, okay? We're go- we, we're going to hang out here for a while. When you get used to us, you know, our ships and then communicating with us, then we'll reveal ourselves. And that goes on for, like, many years, like 10, 20, I don't know how many. Like, th- call it 10, 15 years. And sure enough, they've really enriched humanity lately. Technology's better, culture's better, everything's better. And uh, and they're like, all right, it's, it, it's time. Chill, though, right? And they like step out of their craft and they literally look like the devil. <laughs> they literally look like the devil, <laughs> like horns and pointy tails and like, like pointy teeth and claws. But they're, they, there's no twist. Yeah, they're just nice. They're, they, they really are these like ambivalent, nice people. They're like, don't be scared. We know that a lot of people get scared of us and all. Um, <laughs> I'm Mark. <laughs> <laughs> this is my 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 husband, Alan. And it's like, oh, they're positive. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I, I I've been looking for a new one to to, to read. Uh, it's that or Hell Divers. I I'm, I kind of want to go back to the Hell Divers series. Which and Hell that. Divers? Oh, that's, oh, that's the one where that's the yeah the ever the average life is ten jumps and this guy's on jump ninety five and he's hard yeah. ass. I remember yeah, that. the Earth's all poisoned and we live in the sky on a hover ship. Uh, yeah, th- th- those books are fun. I want to read a book about Antarctica. I don't care if it is a hundred percent whole cloth made up. Like I just, I just fun. like it, it it's would a fun, be fun story. Yeah, just start off with something kind of fun where it's like the Nazis left and then and then just make it up. Yep. Just, yep. Who just, cares? Have, just have a good time. That's all that yeah. matters. That's what matters uh, was, in all these theories that you're having a fun time. <laughs> exactly. The, the funnest part about it is uh, there was a second Operation High Jump, if I remember, like in the 60s or the 70s, um, when a group supposedly went to Antarctica. One of the funnest theories is that they took cameras there and had like like this broken footage of like plant life they discovered and like a civilization of people under the ice. Love it. Fantastic. I believe it. <laughs> Don't oh, need yeah. any further information. I want I'm to believe all it. living under the ice. I want to one of them. I want because one because our, I, be our our existence is is a little boring at times, right? Like you know, like, like the stuff that happens in movies is so dynamic and big and earth changing, and nothing really big has ever happened in our lifetimes. Not really. Like 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 even to us, it doesn't feel real. You know, but I want something that's so big that even if you're not touched by it, it feels big. Like like I want to discover some aliens. Or, or 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 do a thing, right? Seems because like it'd have w- to be aliens, right? Like, what else I could want, it be? I do want, or or one of those lost civilizations. I want to find some mole yeah, cool. people under Antarctica, and they've been under uh, there for like 
80,000 years like, like, and, and their technology is way better than ours. Or way worse. I'm fine with it. But they're mole people, so we just beat the fuck out of them. Like, I like, can't wait to like, kill it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the aliens show up and they're like peddling. And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. the two that I'm prepared are Albert Einstein, fraudulent plagiarist, and wow. Helen, and Helen Keller, secret retard. <laughs> <laughs> These are I'm off to a good. You're off to a good start. I'm sorry. Good These start. Hallmark movie titles are just getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make a sci-fi movie. Helen Keller, <laughs> secret retard. So either of those, which one do you guys? Helen want? Keller. I want Helen Keller. That's the one's gonna piss me off. <laughs> Helen Keller. Okay. All right. So I will make the case that at absolute best, and this is at absolute best, Helen K- Helen Keller was able to say and comprehend a few words and short phrases. All the advanced speech she gave was trained and rehearsed for her by her trainer and teacher Ann Sullivan, mm. almost like a parrot more than a person. Wow. And so I will say this. She went blind and deaf at 19 months old. Do you know what the prognosis is for children who go blind and deaf at 19 months old in the year 2020 as opposed to the to 125 years ago? It's that they will <laughs> never be able to function in society. They will never be able to communicate. They will not be able to engage in normal behavior. There is no hope. You just have to mitigate it. I looked up a lot of reviews of people who talk about this kind of thing, who work with blind deaf people. And what they say is that you're way more likely to have to engage with them lashing out violently at you because of confusion. And, you know, it's, it's sad. They're, they're totally distanced from reality. And so they obviously lash out. You're way more likely to engage in that kind of behavior from these patients than you are them trying to read because they can't read. There's a fundamental level of perception that you need in order to engage with anyone on any meaningful level. And that includes both audio and visual, you know, or I don't, you don't need both. Cause I never I'm, thought of this. There are deaf people who can communicate and there are blind people can, who can communicate, but that's only because blind people take advantage of audio. Deaf people take advantage of visual. That's the only reason that it's able to be done. Is it a coincidence that in all of human history, there have been blind deaf people, not once, not once in human history, other than Helen Keller, have they been able to engage with someone like this and speak in this way? And also, and you may say to me, oh, there was someone 50, there was someone 50 years prior to Helen Keller that was also a taught blind deaf uh, person. That person is even less credible than Helen Keller. <laughs> but they, they literally are. I, I, got, I went on a deep fucking dive with them. So, I can't believe you're shitting on them. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. So I'm saying it's simple. It is far more likely that she is a hoax than it is likely that of all blind deaf people throughout human history, she is the only one that was capable of speech. And not only speech, because remember this, this is not reported that she was able to recognize water. It was reported that she was a very uh, political person with a lot of astute observations about the goings on in society. And what you don't know is that Ann Sullivan, her teacher, isn't it remarkable that all of Helen Keller's political beliefs align exactly with those of Ann Sullivan? Her teacher. That's weird. It's weird that she finds this one woman, teaches her how to say a couple words. There are literally speeches, political speeches of Helen Keller that you can find where the actual speech is Ann Sullivan standing there talking with Helen Keller's hand moving in her hand. Oh, and you know, it's it's like, insane. it's just like Joe Biden. Biden. <laughs> it's almost like Joe Biden. And so I, I will say this. There was an established way that Ann Sullivan said that Helen Keller communicated, and that was to make single measures, single positions in the hand of Ann Sullivan that meant different letters. Yet in all of these speeches, Helen Keller is furiously signing, not that furious because she's retarded, and <laughs> and what it turns out is that Ann Sullivan is speaking at a normal pace, a normal, normal everything, giving normal speeches about politics, her beliefs, everything. And it, Try and uh, speak one sentence to me, Kyle, where instead of saying the words out to me, you spell them out. And not even with your hand. Spell them out with your mouth. How long does it take? Say, hello, my name is Kyle, with just the letters. (laughs) (laughs) F-U-C-K space (laughs) Y-O-U. All right. Oh, my God. That's great. He's making great great points points here. Here's the miracle worker. (laughs) No, Are you no, fucking kidding me? Helen Keller was a scam. 
That's Patty Duke, Helen motherfucker. <laughs> Unbelievable! Do you, think there's one blind, there's, do you think there's one blind person that's ever achieved this? And not only that, she mimics the exact political views of her teacher, which are very, you know, extremist views in a lot of situations, especially for the time. You think that's a coincidence? You think that's that that's real? You think that now? So in the last in the last 120 years, no other deafblind people have been able to be reached this way. No other ones. All, all the right. advancements in, in science, all the advancements in everything, none of them are reached. That's fucking crazy. Isn't that weird? Where's Ann and Sullivan? So, Ann Sullivan's dead. Oh, you got to dig her ass up. Get to the bottom of this. What, dig her ass hands up. out. What a great point. So Ann Sullivan used to talk at these things. She would be the voice of Helen Keller, allegedly. And, and Helen was supposed to be talking to her. And she would talk in a normal cadence? Yes, and she would speak. So so that's impossible from what you just demonstrated because she's getting one letter at a time. That would be a long, drawn-out speech. Yes. Oh, What's yeah. hilarious? Is it God. possible to have shorthand like a court reporter? She can't even see or hear. You yeah. she's doing <laughs> I love this. I love this. And so I Fuck maintain. Helen Keller. I, I maintain. Yeah. My, yeah. my question, Taylor. This has been retarded from the start, and we've all been bamboozled. Is we've Helen Keller even in on the ruse, or is she just playing oh. palm tickle games the whole time, oh, unaware yeah, that there's this speech I, I, happening? I, 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 of course, uh, she's not I, in on the ruse. She's <laughs> retarded. If she's retarded, maybe she's, she's the mastermind. Too. Also, here's another thing. The big thing from the miracle <laughs> worker was the scene where. Helen Keller and her retard voice, like, wah, wah. and like, and like, sand well. and water on there. There's no way to falsify that claim. She doesn't know if water means water. She doesn't know if water means wet. She doesn't know if water means cold. She doesn't know if it means the sensation of water rolling over her fingers. There's no way to falsify what she could possibly mean by expressing that term. And so, for that reason, I say it is absolutely 100% verified based on this two page document I made earlier today that. <laughs> That Helen Keller was a fucking retard. And <laughs> she absolutely was used by Ann Sullivan. And let me add to this. her She came from a very, very wealthy family. And her parents did not want to accept that she was retarded. They were very afraid of that. And so they paid we, Ann we Sullivan. We saw that in the movie where she would go around and just smash things on the table and take everyone's food like an animal. Exactly. And so... Her parents were wow. desperate. They would pay any amount to any teacher. You think Ann Sullivan was the first teacher that came in there? No, there were oh, tons God. of teachers that came in prior that said, yeah, I'm sorry. She doesn't have Ran a lot of mouth screaming. She, she can't engage with reality. Unfortunately, it is very sad. It's a very sad story, but that doesn't change the fact that she had rich parents who were heavily invested in her not being a mental midget. And they used Ann Sullivan who then used Helen Keller to both raise money for her own political causes and espouse the same beliefs that she held uh, in order to get uh, publicity. Something else you don't know about her. She did not get publicity and become famous after all of her stuff, all of her speeches. She was a novelty way before that. She was a novelty way prior to any of this. Just when she went to an all girls school who could who could obviously speak and see and hear that was like a national news story in the early 1900s oh my god she, she's really going to school with these people how can you graduate school in four years if not only can you not go back and reread things and reanalyze things without someone giving it to you but you also have the ability to read at when a paragraph takes five hours to read you're not graduating the same time <laughs> Shit, this shit is so absurd. It is so absurd on its fucking So why face. would they give her uh, like a diploma? Because didn't she get a university diploma also? And she was famous. She was famous. Yeah, and yeah. So so what what never what motive would the university have? Publicity for like publicity. graduating this fucking retard. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so eloquently <right>. put it. <laughs> it sounds to me like what you're saying Terrible. is Helen Keller, secret genius. Secret retard and there we go. There's my <laughs> wow. One. wow. I am stunned. I, I, look, dude, that was fucking concise. I give it to you. Thank Nicely you. Done. She's a so there, there's my, there's my first one. The Einstein one's even better. But yes, <laughs> do it, we, man. We got to get us a little thing. retarded kid. Does that one look good? Wouldn't boys? we have, you're right. Wouldn't we have seen more deaf, blind people excelling, especially in this day and age? 
You look yeah. at uh, people with disabilities that, were, that, were, that kept them out of any type of social interaction even a few decades ago, and now people are living uh, uh, perfectly well in society with certain mental yeah. problems. Or and, and, and you would think you'd get one more Helen Keller who would be deaf and blind and, and going oh. around and touring and it's nothing, almost like nothing. It was, it's almost like it was easier to bullshit people 130 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost, that's well, very good. No, My because God. what you're describing is exactly what they did with Coco, the gorilla. She, it would oh, just, yes. Coco, Coco can't speak at all. She just makes symbols and the bitch, uh, her, her, her Ann Sullivan just says what she thinks Coco means. It's the Coco's same exact saying. thing. I was I was absolutely no. devastated when I deep dived Still into Coco. Access. I was like, "Oh no, this 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 gorilla wasn't talking." I was so, <laughs> I love that story. I loved it but so it's much. It's adorable with the kitten. It puts the hat on and shit like that. Uh, so you know, I, I'm fine with Coco. You know something else with Coco is that she had a fixation on nipples and breasts, and so yeah. there were there were people who took out like cases against the zoo because like some chick reporter would show up and be like, "I'm here to talk to Coco," and then some zookeeper would be like, "Yeah, she likes it." when you pop your tits out and like there were newscasters oh, to do that so coco could like grab the nip or something and so yeah that's nice coco I, sexual harassment I, I wish you had made your conspiracy oh, theory good. that coco was in fact not a gorilla but a man in a gorilla suit <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be something <laughs> now that would be fucking hilarious if, if a guy dressed up as a fucking gorilla and had perfect sign language <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but also so that, like titties yeah <laughs> woody I, I did manage to open your uh the third one slot. i think should work the third yeah. one works yeah one works for me. yeah so what woody likes to create powerpoints to go along with his, his conspiracy slides and so <sighs> just because we always vote at the end of these because the goal is to try and convince people <laughs> who is, mm. is compelled by my helen keller presentation Oh Jesus this Christ! Is, you're gonna win. That was crazy. You're gonna win. I haven't heard I'm Kyle's fucking, yet, but I'm throwing away all my Helen Keller memorabilia I have around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that! You bit, 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 so strong. Bit, 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 bit. <laughs> See, but the the goddamn Helen Keller shit just makes perfect oh, it's sense. killer. It's a yeah. strong like, it, one. It's so, so obvious. We have history. We have. Like yeah, obviously she true. couldn't have done that. So yeah, wow, that's a tough one. That that he's, is. Uh, I remember watching win, that movie. But there's two left. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that movie in school, and being taught about the miracle worker and Helen Keller. Yeah, and and it hurts to 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 come to the realization that yes, yeah, she was a fraud. Like it he's brought this bullshit. up before, and I was like, "You're just an asshole. <laughs> You're just an <laughs> yeah. asshole." She's an <laughs> inspirational story. Childhood. But if he's to be believed, I've done zero research on my own that no one has ever done what she did, then you're left with two options. Either she's literally, she's she's either a genius or a retard. It's literally one or the other. Like she's <laughs> like either the be. smartest deaf blind person that's ever existed. Like if she'd had her senses, she'd have been Einstein. Yeah. Maybe not Einstein, because apparently he's about to disprove Einstein. <laughs> um, but <laughs> oh, yeah, right. or, or she she in fact was a literal retarded person. I think it's like when, like, like Ann Sullivan must have been like, with with Helen thinking it was like a dog. You ever see people online? They're like, "Look, my dog." And it goes, "I love you, I love you." Oh, it's saying, "I love you." Yeah, my dog oh, yes. said, "I love you." It's like, no, your stupid dog didn't say, "I love you." Right? It, it made three syllables. It needs I'll to give take you a that. Shit or and, yeah. Instead, so, it's more like it's like this, and she's like, she says that yeah. capitalism she's is like, inherently <laughs> flawed, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Let me read you a supposed quote. From Helen. Oh, okay. I would <laughs> like to hear a quote from the great Ms. Keller. <laughs> Did she ever get married? That would be interesting. Oh, oh God. From her that lines up exactly with the beliefs of her, her teacher. It is... <sighs> it's got fucking paper. When, <laughs> when, when we watched that great. movie in junior high, the only thing I remember is the 20 minute speech our teacher gave us about how if anyone laughed at the end of the movie <laughs> how much like he had a whole chart on this is how if you snicker this is how much trouble you're gonna get in oh, yeah, yeah. all right man the, we don't, God, you fucking funny. you are showing us this movie we don't want to see <laughs> yeah. it 
Yeah. Can I just conjugate verbs in the you know, outside, please? They, it was a great way to find out who was going to be a comic in the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah, okay, that's going to be a comic. <laughs> he sat on my desk as, as, during the entire movie. <laughs> I believe that. Your balls are on my hand, dude. He's like, tell your parents. They're not going to care. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, can i at least watch I, it sounds funny what's going no you may not watch <laughs> try watching that movie hey. as a 15 year old and not cracking the fuck up it's so funny yeah there's no way so, can we walk out of that class like drunks like just a silent <laughs> 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 that was the good shit man that was the good shit <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so tell, tell me tell me if you think this seems more likely to have come from ann sullivan her teacher who is very politically motivated or more likely to come from a person, the only person in human history, blind, deaf, and mostly dumb that can't, that, that can actually be a wizard. Yeah. Yeah. Our first, here's her. Here's Helen Keller's quote translated by Ann Sullivan. Our worst foes are ignorance, poverty, and the unconscious cruelty of our commercial society. Oh, fuck. These are the causes. <laughs> these, the, these are the causes of blindness. These are the enemies which destroy the sight of children and workmen and undermine the health of mankind. What? Does that seem like a blind, deaf person? Nah, 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 Helen Keller said bullshit. that. No, How long did it take her to say it? it. How many Ann months Sullivan did it take her to say that? She was a college <laughs> graduate, Taylor. She speaks yeah. like that. Ann Sullivan said that shit. I'm throwing this in the finished box. I win. <laughs> Oh, oh my god either that I, retard was more eloquent than all of us combined oh or... yeah it's a slam dunk my friend or the more likely thing is that she was manipulated and used so just saying just saying bring.com <laughs> i'm telling you even helen keller stuff you go on google and you try and search it you get a curated list of sources you go on bing and it's like you actually get with the highest ranking this, this piece of shit yeah piece of shit <laughs> helen keller is the first thing that comes oh, up what i was searching with retard retard bitch idiot <laughs> 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 I, I, I could say all this right to her face and she wouldn't know what the fuck was going uh, on hello, she oh. wouldn't know fuck uh, oh, oh what what are you true. saying to me <laughs> what did you I call me go like, I let her go like this on my face she's not gonna have a fucking clue what i'm saying <laughs> you just like point her finger at herself and then dump a load of shit in her hand <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're fucking shit <laughs> what is it Ellen? It's shit. It's shit. <laughs> she learns to communicate through sense yeah. of smell. How's how's your sense of smell? <laughs> See, one of, it, it, it didn't get to this point, but one of my uh, evidences of Helen Keller was just going to be to link you guys a video and be like, she's clearly retarded. <laughs> she's clearly a retarded person. She would have to be. I, I, uh, I don't know if I made my point well before, but it's like, even if her brain wasn't born dysfunctional yeah. without potential yeah. it, it wasn't, wasn't nourished not, yeah. just not getting yeah. the yeah input yeah, yeah I, uh, it's my a, mom's it's an teacher. empty hard drive my mom's a teacher and she has seen those environmentally retarded kids who just like grew up with like dumb dumb parents who didn't like talk to them at all and now they're retarded and they'll never be <laughs> like the same again mm. like like no, if they had been fostered in like a an educational environment okay yeah. you, you could work at walmart billy but instead you know they mm. they, they grew up absolutely malnourished mentally yeah, it's speaking. so interesting there's there's a um there's a specific amount of time that a child has to learn the basics and, and and a parent has to be very nurturing and fostering and and they have to learn things by touch and smell and all their senses and if they don't in that really limited amount of time they're going to have all kinds of developmental problems later sure. so true. you know you got to get you got to get in there uh, early with that shit it's That's why yeah, so i have some expertise i have a special needs son and mm -hmm. uh he had like a, a big language delay so we spent like our whole lives racing the clock you know trying to get him to certain language uh right landmarks. right those those uh what yeah. are they called landmarks yeah yeah you know because whatever he turns 21 and you can't expect a lot of speech improvement after that uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that's it's such an odd, fucking amazing thing how that works. You know, 
It's just goop. Why does the time matter? Right? Yeah. It's just a big load of goop. It's you, not a fucking computer with a timer and a circuit stops. It's right? just goop. And, and what's it's so special about language? You could learn something. If you had oh, yeah. to learn, I don't know, a new city or something, you'd be right. fine. But yeah. you can't learn a language? I don't know. But Like a language. It, and that's the weirdest thing. Like children learn their basic language without a book, without just hearing shit. Yeah. And then... You could spend a year in fucking France. You ain't. You're not learning French. <laughs> yeah, like you. I don't think without a book or something, just hearing shit. I don't think you'd learn it. <laughs> it's neuro neuroplasticity. There's a point at which your brain becomes less receptive to receiving that kind of input, and it's much younger than we would think. And so, like, yeah, but I yeah. that Helen Keller was not environmentally <laughs> retarded. Like she, she, she didn't come from a bunch of like like a retarded family she came from a very rich family like i said but she had a disease at 19 months that knocked out those senses was it scarlet fever that is that. literally what they said it was I, yeah i had it scarlet, was scarlet fever at two scarlet years. fever um and you yeah. did yeah when the fuck were you born in 1873 <laughs> christ no Holy you shit, cholera too <laughs> oh my goodness oh yeah we had the dysentery what the fuck is the bee uh, plague dysentery. called i can't think of its name Bel the bubonic plague that's what i'm going for <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. bubonic, bubonic plague. Like black death i was trying to that's avoid the had. embarrassment of calling it the bulimic plague <laughs> Like, I couldn't get the past it. I'm stuck on it. <laughs> a, a, a squirrel with the bubonic. It made me throw up a lot. Colorado. <laughs> oh, Colorado. That's... They just found a squirrel. I read that was normal, oh, lock it though. down. I read yeah. that squirrels. I don't think it's that big it. a deal though. Like I think yeah. the bubonic plague is totally curable with antibiotics yeah, or something. It's oh, not a big thing now. anymore. Yeah, yeah, penicillin. So, but they're like, oh, squirrel has it. So we're all supposed to lose our But I think again. squirrels have it. A, I read squirrels have it a lot. I have to check my well, sources. They do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but they, like, like I, it's like the year of the shark. I don't remember this. Sometimes, like, I don't know, yeah. seven years ago. The year, awesome. The sharks were fucking everywhere. The East Coast, yeah. anytime there's a bite, they're made the, the Time magazine is covering it. The year there. Turns out that was about a normal year for sharks. It was just a yeah. media creation. It's and how I, yeah. they present it. And that might media be what, does like, this with everything. They do it with yeah, everything. Every the, fucking thing. Media has the unique ability to construct narratives wherever they see fit. Like they, they, they can just do it. They can just create. They scare the shit out of people, make them do things, which is exactly what I think this COVID thing is. But whatever. Whatevs. Well, I don't know. It's like, I was more talking about the media pumping up this fraud Einstein. <laughs> oh, that guy. Or that fucking retard Helen Keller. <laughs> or that fucking retard Helen Keller. She can go fuck herself. Well, not really. She can't go fuck herself because no. she was a retard. No, her but hands work fine. I would just lay my dick in her hand and tell her to read the fucking Bible or something. <laughs> She's just going like this. She's <laughs> yeah. rail off your cock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if? What if that like? Her communication style gave her this like extra dexterity, and she gave great hand mm. jobs. Oh, watch, a watch Helen Keller hand job. Even her hand is fucking retarded, and she's <laughs> doing shit. She doesn't. She doesn't know what's up. I'm done Either with the. Hand. I'm I'm, I'm uh, done with the uh, GM for Helen Keller. She can go. I fuck love this. <laughs> I am gonna fucking. I am watching videos. I'm doing. I am going down. The Helen Keller fucking rabbit hole tonight. And you know what? You know what the Helen Keller rabbit hole for me was? It was watching videos and being like, this doesn't support my conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let me find something that supports. That's just my don't... life, by the way. That's my let me Facebook find something feed. something that supports my fucking, yeah. That's Twitter, that's Facebook and everything. <laughs> Fuck you, like, fuck no. you. Oh, that that agrees with what I think. Yeah, it's like she learned by blah blah blah. And I'm like, this shit ain't funny. Who cares? Get, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. Hey, so that brings us alignment to Albert Einstein. Oh, God. <laughs> so my contention with this conspiracy is not that Albert Einstein was some idiot, some moron. It's that media and pop culture has turned him into a guy who discovered all of these things around the same time and yet when you actually do a deep dive on it you realize that even contemporary scientists this this part isn't a conspiracy at all contemporary scientists with einstein fucking hated him because he had a habit of plagiarizing he would not give people credit for things that he found out and so basically the way they describe it is this is that let's say kyle woody and i 
are building an obelisk, right? And Kyle puts a stone down. Woody puts a stone down. Kyle, Woody, Kyle, Woody. When it gets to the capstone, I put a little capstone on it. And then not only do I say I created the obelisk, I say I own it because I did the last thing on there because he was notorious for not acknowledging prior in, in intellectual <clears throat> people. And so here's a bunch of actual examples you can look up. People in his time were like fucking pissed about this and it gets buried now. In 1878, James Maxwell in Scotland published Special Theory of Relativity in the Encyclopedia Britannica, which Einstein copied heavily in his own 1905 Theory of Relativity and did not cite Maxwell. Didn't cite him. Took all the, the research that Maxwell did 27 years prior, applied it to his own shit. Didn't give him credit. From Maxwell, Epstein also, or I'm sorry, Einstein, not Epstein. Einstein also uh, on conspiracy. This conspiracy now. runs deep. At a file island. That is a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. Another another key part of relativity was that the idea that speed of light was a constant and was independent of the motion of its source. That's something that Maxwell wrote about in 1878, and then that Einstein took, co-opted, and pretended he discovered in 1905. Uh, Maxwell studied the phenomenon of light extensively and first proposed that it was electromagnetic in nature. He wrote that in 1878, stolen by Einstein. 1898, Paul Gerber in Germany publishes the exact equations in Annalen der Physik, which Einstein published 17 years later in 1915 as his perihelion motion of Mercury, with no credit to Gerber, claiming that he was in the dark and he suddenly came to it in his sleep. In 1920, after being pressured on this, Einstein admits to plagiarism. He admitted to it. He admitted that he took that from Paul Gerber in 1898. 1900, Max Planck and Wilhelm Wien of Germany developed the quantum theory, which Einstein plagiarized in his light quantum paper in 1905. He did not cite Planck nor Wien, even though later it was clear that he was copy pasting or whatever the version of that was. <laughs> 1903. Yeah, 1903. Ointo del Olinto de Preto publishes E equals MC squared in Ate, a scientific magazine which Einstein was an avowed avid reader. He later claimed as his own work, and he failed to cite to Preto. Took the E equals MC squared, published it years later, took it for himself. 1905, Albert publishes four groundbreaking essays in the field of theoretical physics. What they don't tell you is that this is stolen from people by the names of James Maxwell, Henrik Lawrence, Joseph Larmer, Olito de Preto, Robert Brown, Ludwig Boltzmann, Frederick Hassenor, and George Fitzgerald. All of these people wrote about this years, sometimes decades prior, and he amalgamated all of their research into an unoriginal piece that he then released without citing any of them. And media, pop culture, grabs onto that and says, oh my God, Einstein's discovered all this. Meanwhile, lots of concurrent, contemporary peers of his are saying, what the fuck? Like, this was an actual thing in the scientific community at the time. You want to hear about it now? They're like, dude, Einstein, what the fuck, dude? Like, we did all this. <laughs> Is that we a did quote? All well, yeah, 1908. <laughs> what? Dude. <laughs> the first use of the word. He does get the first use of the word dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the hell's up with you you know copping my discoveries is what he said. It was like, what the fuck they were all very like this is a real thing scientists hated him because he would never cite people who discovered things he would take it pretend it was his 1915 Einstein pre presents his paper and publishes the general theory of relativity based on the mathematics of Marcel Grossman and Berhard Reinman from a decade prior again he does not cite these men it was 19 or 1878 that the theory of relativity was first getting put, you know, into popular scientific understanding by James Maxwell. These other guys built on it and Einstein failed to acknowledge any of their contributions instead doing the thing that lots of scientists accused him of, which was laying a capstone on something and then claiming ownership of everything that came prior instead mm -hmm. of doing what most scientists do, which is, hey, I, I added a little bit here. Thank you, Weissman, blah, 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 blah all of them for it. So a little additional thing, he was apparently so unimpressive as, as a physicist that he wasn't even consulted in the Manhattan Project. 130,000 people were consulted on the Manhattan Project, and apparently Einstein wasn't up to snuff. Henry Poincaré 
was the foremost expert on relativity, <laughs> relativity in the late 19th century and the first person to formally present the theories, having published more than 30 books and over 500 papers on the topic. Extensive documentation exists that Einstein and his associates have studied Poincaré's theories and mathematics for years. Yet when Einstein published his almost wholly plagiarized work, he made no reference to Poincaré's mathematics. Like I said earlier, a non-comprehensive list of those that's confirmed, absolutely confirmed, he plagiarized from James Maxwell, Henrik Lawrence, Joseph Larmer, and a dozen others. Uh, in 1895, Einstein failed the entrance exam to an engineering school in Zurich. That's interesting. I thought he was like a hyper genius. Here's, uh, here's Nikola Tesla on Einstein. Einstein's relativ relativity work is a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple who who ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists rather than scientists. Do you know that while he was doing all these things, he worked as a clerk in a patent office? He yes. worked in a clerk in a patent office, a third level clerk. Throughout years and years there, they never promoted him. They never made him any more significant. He was a third class clerk at a government office in Bern, never progressed beyond this level with even years of experience. By all contemporary reports, Einstein wasn't even an accomplished mathematician. It has been well documented that much of the mathematical content of Einstein's so-called theories were well beyond his ability. Walter Isaacson, president of the Aspen Institute, stated that Einstein's first wife, Maleva Marek, was a Serbian phys was, quote, a Serbian physicist who had helped him with his math. Other prominent scientists have made the claim that his wife did a lot of his math for him. In 1907, Einstein admits to plagiarism. In a paper he wrote in 1907, in part responding to already virulent accusations of plagiarism, Einstein declared that plagiarism was perfectly acceptable as a form of ethical research, stating, quote, the nature of physics is that what follows has already been partly solved by the authors. I am therefore entitled to leave out a thoroughly pedantic survey of the literature, end quote. In other words, the scientists all built on each other's work. So Einstein could freely compile the work of everyone before him and represent it as his own with no obligation to even mention them or their work. His view of ethical science was like building a tower where each person adds one stone. And if I had the last stone, I not only take credit for the entire design and construction of the, of the tower, but I own the building. Final note. In 1953, Sir Edmund Whitaker published a detailed account of the origin and development of all the theories in equations of his physics with extensive reference to the primary sources, documenting beyond doubt that Einstein had no priority in any of it and clearly stating so in his report. Einstein was alive and well when Whitaker published his book, yet he offered no dispute to the conclusions, no refutation of Whitaker's claim that he, Einstein, had been irrelevant in the entire process. <laughs> Einstein made no attempts at his own defense and hid in the bushes ignoring all accusations mm. amazing man a, you missed some good parts taylor because i fucking hate einstein not as much as i hate covid but i fucking hate that clown that bloviating prick he everything he took credit for every everybody's shit and then used it to wax philosophical for the rest of his life here's the best part einstein religious zealot Einstein viciously and famously denied the existence or the validity of quantum mechanics until his death, quoting, God does not play dice with the universe. I'm sorry, oh. Einstein, but what does God have to do with physics? Oh, he also, I think he also stole E equals MC squared from either Lorentz or Dirac. Dirac, who is barely functionally autistic taking advantage of a mentally infirmed man <laughs> to further his scientific career. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. The reason he was not asked to be in the Oppenheimer to the Manhattan Project is because Oppenheimer knew he was a pussy. That's why. <laughs> and he would never use the weapon. That the, the nuke, that beautiful nuke was intended to be a tactical <laughs> war battlefield device. And he knew that Einstein would either not support it or give it uh, <clears throat> give it away to the enemy. Oh. So he kept him out of it on purpose. Fuck Einstein. So your yeah, that theory is, is that, that the that Jewish is guy was pro Nazi. See, um, I, no, he was he was, but he was very left leaning. He was denied security access, and all the other scientists were also told not to true. Just, not to discuss the uh, all of this uh, project with Einstein. I left that one kind of unconvinced. I, it I was Einstein's like, letter though that made the Manhattan Project uh, uh, even even happen. That's true. Uh, I got that. It's like, hey, we need to you know get a move on this thing because uh, Hitler might be doing it. Um, he was doing I it. like it. I like what you said, but you could do the same thing with Led Zeppelin and old blues singers. So Led Zeppelin is the band that just happened to get popular with it. They stole all of it from old black blues singers and. You only wanted Led Zeppelin because they presented it in a, a better way. So 
Elvis. There's some there's some equity in in how you maybe he was just more entertaining with his wacky hair. Uh, maybe maybe that that obelisk, uh, like in a video game where you you add on, but it's not real. It's like a framework or lattice work until that last thing is put on, and then it goes boom, and now it's one piece. So until you put that last piece on, it's not really a full thing yet, and you do own it after. You and it's my that suspicion that you could do that with most scientists, right? You know, like, yes, what do I, I have to credit so. everyone from Euclid to, I looked him up, oh. Muhammad, IBM, Musa, Al-Khwazimi, the Who inventor of like, the algebra. Number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the, you know, I went I, by that radio name back in uh, 1985. <laughs> right, right. Like, it, it is nearly impossible to credit the entire tower of scientific and mathematic discovery right. that happened before you got there. See, see but yeah. I will add to this. There's a very big difference between them citing Euclid and citing someone who made the exact same discovery 27 years prior or 15 years prior or two years prior. But even your arguments were not exact same. It was, hey, you know, he took this, added to it, and now he gets all this credit for it. And, and to I, I Anthony's mean, point, there was a whole lot of like, well, shucks, maybe that adding to it was the, is the, the most capstone. important part. It was the thing that, that made it a useful science or I don't know. So, so my... I. I Maybe I explained it poorly. He wasn't adding to it in the way that you would think. He was amalgamating content. Your so whole theory is based on me understanding <laughs> amalgamating. <laughs> That's where it falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> he was the Stan Lee of physics. <laughs> he was taking bits and pieces. I'm with you, I know. <laughs> I know. He was taking bits and pieces of already established science and then reformulating it into something and he would oh. put his own take on there, and then that's what Tesla added to it. He would say, like a stupid artist would take paints of different color and dab them and make a beautiful paint. <laughs> I, got it that way. I get it. What a hack! <laughs> that's not. But that's not entirely what I'm saying. It's more like a react video on YouTube. You watch the movie and then go, "Whoa! Well, what right. do you guys think of my react video? Wasn't that entertaining?" <laughs> He's watching The Godfather oh, 2 going, oh, man, wow. Hey, everybody, check this out. Check this out. What did you think of my movie? Oh, fuck. <laughs> look, at Tesla, look at Tesla's take on him. His take said it better than I could because Tesla was way fucking smarter than me or Einstein. And he said, basically, he compiled a bunch of information from previous research. And then he, on top of that, would add almost sophistry that wasn't falsifiable and wasn't useful. That's what Tesla's take was. Oh, the, hey, Tesla. <laughs> oh, AC is better than DC, that guy. <laughs> you know, you know, Tesla died like completely pen penniless in love with a pigeon, right? I don't yeah. care. <laughs> was it a he hot did in a hotel yeah. room in a <laughs> shitty hotel room in love with a bitch? Hey, hey, you know what a good sign is that someone's a fucking genius is that they die alone in a hotel room in love with a pigeon. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right on target. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like no, so Taylor could go odd. either way on that argument. Like that's a, that's the sign of a genius. That's the sign of a moron. Whatever supports his argument. <laughs> oh, you're absolutely right. The whole point is to present the argument the way I want to present it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. yeah. I enjoyed it, Taylor. But also, like you, when you, I, I was... you open too big with the Helen Keller thing, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would it have been better to close with Helen Keller? If you closed with Helen Keller, we all would have been considering the other ones. And then Helen Keller would have been like, oh, fuck, of course. <laughs> well, I hope everybody's convinced of Helen Keller, at least, because that's oh, the place. Yeah, I'm convinced of Helen Keller. That one and wins for sure. Not, not only was it was it pretty entertaining, but uh, I'm pretty sure that she was uh, a retarded person. <laughs> you convinced you convinced Helen Keller the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, she watched the show and said, yes, fuck her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm open to the idea that she was environmentally retarded, right? Like because of a lack of audio and visual stimuli, she was never, she might not have been born with a broken brain, but how could she have developed a fully formed one? Well, yeah. retarded doesn't necessarily mean that like her, her brain wasn't functional. It just means she's held back. She's restrained in some way or another. And by that definition, she's retarded. Well, like, like, not she have the input like that. Even as a kid watching that movie, as a kid, I would think like, well, how the hell would you know if someone signs into your hand what they're even trying to reference? You could go like this and go glass and, and, and then and then do some kind of letters. 
but there's no way to really make the connection. There's too many missing parts. You could think like you said, is it like something uh, hard, uh, thin, this, like what are you trying to tell me? Yeah, that that would let me know that what you're spelling is what this is. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. An understanding of meaning. Right. No no way whatsoever. And so I'm glad that one resonated. Oh, I I love that one. I came into this episode being like, dude, the Helen Keller one isn't going to work very well, but the Einstein one... That one's going to go good for me. Complete opposite. Just goes to no, show. I, I still think Einstein, you know. What are you going to do? I would never say. He's, he's Einstein. I think he was just a better, a better. he presented it. But people, I don't know. Did he schmooze with the right people in the media that put him over? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, and that's part of, Einstein. you know, that was part of the whole thing, here's, I guess. Here's what it is with me and Einstein. The modern scientists seem to have a lot of respect for him. You know, when, when you hear Stephen mm. Cox oh. speak. He speaks really highly of Einstein. Stephen Hawking? No, Cox, I think. C-O-X. Do I have his name wrong? Oh. Who's uh, Stephen Cox? Fucking who genius is. teaches in England or something. Let me see it's if porn I Porn star. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> he was on Joe Rogan's show. That's where I discovered him. It seems like Einstein is like... The kind of guy who will like those Facebook pages that are like, I fucking love science. His name's like, Brian no, Cox. He's, I don't know if that deep. fixes it. Oh, but Brian Cox. Cox. Stars. <laughs> sounds like Einstein was no Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds but like. Yeah, yeah. Like me. when you listen to guys like Brian Cox, and uh, and I can't name a bunch of modern scientists. Neil Tyson deGrasse, maybe. That's, that's it. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, yeah. Anthony. Um, yeah, these guys seem to have a lot of respect for Einstein. Therefore, I do. That's where my thing comes from. But they know who they're yeah. talking to. Like they're smart and they're shamelessly self-promotional. They know exactly <laughs> the audience that they're like they're not, they're not going to get up there and go, "Hey, by the way, uh, Einstein was an idiot. I just wanted you guys to know." They're going to go, "You know what? Einstein was smart and all of you are smart for thinking he was smart." Now, right, get out your checkbooks and write That's pretty uh, good. Gonna, buy my book. That's the plan. He's pretty good. That's that's a good point. They are very <laughs> self-promoting scientists. Like, if you know a scientist's name, he's already a piece of shit. Self. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone know a real scientist's name. That's a strong point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back up there, thank you. <laughs> There's someone out there working on a COVID vaccine, and none of us know. Yeah, who yeah. She is. No one will ever know. I don't want to know. Name. He shouldn't have fucking time to tell me his name. Right? He shouldn't right. be on the JRE doing interviews. <laughs> what is a conspiracy or esoteric thing you've looked into? Kind of a two part question. One that you went into thinking it was total bullshit, and maybe you got flipped a little bit, and then maybe another you went into kind of convinced, and then you unconvinced yourself through the research. Or if either one's right. better, just go. So when I was incarcerated and I was reading books and stuff and prisoners would come up to me, this is back in like, you know, almost 20 years ago now, prisoners would come up to me and say, you know, you didn't get away with your ecstasy trafficking because you never paid off the cops and the politicians and don't you know the CIA brings the coke in. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, you know, these guys are just disgruntled because they're in here and making this stuff up. And now I've written a whole war on drugs series of books documenting <laughs> everything i was told i wrote, I wrote america made about barry seal the pilot that was bringing the coke into arkansas for george hw bush and bill clinton was providing the state security the state troopers and because clinton played ball with the cia he got awarded the white house and back then clinton's brother roger got busted buying coke for bill and he got busted on the video saying to the undercover cop, my brother's got a nose like a vacuum cleaner. So <laughs> I, you, I can't know argue, you can't argue that conspiracy is not true anymore. Yeah, that that the the Clintons and the CIA, I guess. When was this? When was this period? Because I know. When they, so George H. Bush, Oliver North, Felix Rodriguez, these were the CIA guys. They were bringing the coke in. Barry Seal was flying the weapons down to Nicaragua. And then they were bringing the coke back in to Arkansas, and it was all going very well until two young boys were found dead on the railway tracks who had stumbled upon the operation. They'd been executed, laid side by side on the railway tracks, and it was made to look like the train had run over them. And one of the dads worked on the train tracks, and he knew that was impossible. The fact that the blood was not fresh 
was a heads up to the emergency service that arrived on the scene. But what did the Clintons do? They brought in, what's his name? Fami Malik, the coroner, a coroner who helped Bill's mum get out of a situation. And Fami Malik's verdict was the boys had smoked so much weed, they'd gone into a psychosis uh-huh. and laid side by side on the railway tracks and the train had run over them. And to this day, Linda Ives, the mum of one of them, is still campaigning for justice for her kid. She's confronted Bill Clinton. He's blown her off over the years. And my book, Clinton, Bush, and CIA Conspiracies, it's the stories of four people whose lives weave together, and they include Linda Ives, Gary Webb, and Kiki Camarena, um, the guy who who, who narcos Mexico is about. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wait, isn't he the guy who was tortured to death horribly? Yes. Well, I knew a pilot for the Sinaloa cartel who was involved in things back then. He was an American guy, and he worked both sides. He's dead now. That's the only reason I'm authorized to tell these stories, because he died a few years ago. He said, don't ever say any any of this stuff while I'm alive. And he told me that he did work for both sides. He worked for the cartel, and he worked for the feds. And when he, he never murdered anyone when he was working for the cartel. He only murdered people when he was working for the U.S. government. And he, he explained to me how it all worked. So from the very beginning, you know, where the prisoners were telling me that this conspiracy exists and I wasn't believing them. Mm-hmm. Now I'm speaking to an actual cartel pilot who knew all about the CIA and the deals the cartels have with the U.S. Mm-hmm. government and the weapons they buy in exchange. So, you, so here's how it sets mm-hmm. up. You'll have one cartel, for example, El Chapo, who's working with the Mexican government. And they're buying all these weapons from America to fight the war on drugs. But those weapons are applied to the rival cartels. So the Mexican government can say, yeah, America, we're fighting the war on drugs. Look at all these these raids we're making. But they're wiping out El Chapo's enemy. But it gets to the point where El Chapo gets so powerful, the government has to hand him over to America. So the cartel leaders are fall guys. Most of that money from the cocaine sales ends up permanently in the hands of the Mexican government, the heads of the army, the heads of the police. It doesn't matter who they arrest, Chapo, Escobar, Cali, these guys just come and go. They are the bogeymen in the war on drugs. Most Mm -hmm. of the money is going to the biggest mafia in the world, which is the politicians. And from the early parts of the the Mexican cartel in the 80s, the, the president of Mexico, he retired to a castle in Ireland with half a billion net worth, which could not be explained the source of, and I believe that that's where he lives to this day. I mean, Sounds if you want to really if you, nice, if you're trying yeah. to escape as a former Mexican drug lord, a castle in Ireland is like the furthest away. You can get. So what I you're feel. saying is this guy's dope as fuck. Is that the, the core? Taylor, that his fucking <laughs> castle's <laughs> awesome. Taylor, Taylor, when when an investigator shows up at his castle, what's the accent he used to uses to convince them? He's a good old local Irish boy. He's a witcher. <laughs> Jump a point you, which he just does that. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, uh, just enjoy, you know, uh, I don't know the color green. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Uh, the cheese is that a thing? Like the cheese? <laughs> that is insane. So, and, and it's easy, like I know, because I like the the HW stuff is wild. It's easy to just forget because, like, when someone becomes president, it's like you think of them like, oh, that was that president. And you don't think about like that leading up to it. Like HW was like an absolute garbage piece of shit head of the CIA for a long time, like actively taking place and destabilizing South American governments, moving coke. He cre- he helped create, I think. Like he was, I think, a head of the CIA when they began that like fucking over black people with crack in inner city areas. Or maybe it was the guy before him, but like Clinton, you, you, you Clinton and him ramped it. Clinton and him ramped it up. And he, he, George H.W. Bush was asked at a dinner, a private dinner, how, you know, how on earth can you be running this war on drugs while bringing the drugs in? How can you get away with that? And Bush's answer was, it's so far removed from the possibilities of what may be happening in the Americans' minds, no one would ever believe it were possible. Yeah, yeah. Like if you told someone, like, oh, the U.S. is, is assisting the cartels and moving drugs because it's financially beneficial to them. You'd be like, no, nah. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, and then like, that would be it. 
that oh that guy's a kooky conspiracy theorist he seems to think that these giant multi-billion dollar international businesses have shady shit going on yeah and clinton these illegal like businesses a, <laughs> clinton like i said who his brother got busted buying coke for him uh he ended up locking a record amount of non-violent drug users including women hundreds of thousands of them to pr- fill the private prisons so the hypocrisy is absolutely staggering. Wow. At the time, there was this like culture war against these, uh, what did they call them, super predators or something like that? And uh, the idea yeah, was Yeah, I that, remember the, the, the Clinton? That's the the Hillary Hil- it was Hillary, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, there was this thought process that like people were going to prison, learning how to be very good prisoners, teaching each other, lifting weights, <laughs> and they were coming out like jacked and scarier and better trained and becoming better prisoners. And that's three strikes you're out kind of got employed and um and being tough on crime was a very politically popular position to take and all of america mm-hmm. was lined up i was lined up i think i was wrong but that's what i believed at the time yeah yeah because it, it well it's easy to get most of the population lined up on stuff like when you look back and you realize stuff who's like that it's like more crime well, what do yeah crime this is, who is, this is who's for, the media. who's for child pornography no one's for that but they use it to launder censorship no they they well, people, people who consume it aren't against it but like they <laughs> they launder in internet bills in the modern day where oh you don't you don't want to be tracked with your real name and shit well you must want pedophiles to win and it's like well no <laughs> just because you can't you can't vote against the child online protection act without seeming like a monster even if that act has a bunch of shit in there that's about tracking people you know yeah so they can always launder what they want through the media yeah and the media was showing you know all these these crack uh, monsters and crack babies and also you know they portray that prisoners are just pedophiles rapists serial killers but when i got there i saw the average arrest was a young person with a bit of weed getting like a two to five year sentence. And mm-hmm. if you look at the stats wow. at the peak of the war on drugs, the highest arrest category was weed possession, almost a million arrests a year. Crazy. They go in as potheads. They become heroin addicts. They become Nazis. They've got criminal records. They don't stand a chance. Their lives are ruined. They give them $50 on the door. They say, have a nice day when they're getting released. And they come right back. As soon as they come back, $60,000 of taxpayers' money to the prison and, yeah. by design. A regular person of the public, I'm talking about me at that time, felt like they were in there for armed robbery. They were in there for mugging. They were in there for like, I don't know, beating up nice people yeah. who Violence. didn't do anything. <clears throat> because that's what the news, like I remember like, it, the news isn't like this anymore. But I remember growing up, the news being a lot about like the eight crimes that happened tonight. Are you like, kidding? Like, that's exactly what the news is now. Oh, well, to I me, watched, it's about politics. Maybe I, I guess I watch C- I think what it is, is I watch cable news instead of local news now. But growing up, we had local news. We uh-huh. I didn't have CNN growing up. I think we had the channel, but nobody knew how to dial it in. So, so we watch <laughs> four, seven, and thirteen and twenty-one or whatever our local stations were, and you'd hear about the crimes of the night. And so, like those were the people you thought of when you thought criminal. You thought the guy wearing a mask who's going to beat you up at night and rob you or break into your house or, or rape or mm, murder. Yeah, bad yeah, yeah. boys, bad boys. What are you going to do? Dude, what are you going to do when yeah, they come? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, the you imagine the most yeah. intense, heartless killers. Will Smith led me wrong. I watched that movie and I took it to be a historical documentary. There's a whole there's a I'm not sure if the three of you are aware of this. There's a there's a whole movement of people. They don't think birds are real. <laughs> no, well they're not i they think the birds are being charged right by the uh, power lines that's why they sit there <laughs> no they... no no the, everybody is in quarantine so they can charge the birds. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you it is heard that one? i have literally <laughs> seen <laughs> illustrations i have seen illustrations of like what the inside of a bird supposedly looks like and it's all yeah. mechanical like the fucking terminator yeah, what is the as a, this website? Obviously, as birds done, are it. a modern invention. You don't see any old pictures of birds, like from Egypt. That, that's or... where I'm. You know, whenever something comes up, I, I I I don't dismiss things out of hand. I don't say, "Ha, bullshit! I'm too smart to even look into that." No, I'll look into even the craziest things. But all I had to do was do what you just did, Woody. I went, man, I, I'm pretty sure they talk about birds in the Bible and like Dude, all sorts you, of this... ancient text. Mm-hmm. You know, like like Da okay, Vinci birds are was. Real, was okay. There's plenty of illustrations. I mean, look at the Egyptian uh, uh, hieroglyphics, you know, with the birds in the autumn and shit, you know, like, and then the I bones thought, from the dinosaurs. And... Maybe they've been here the whole time watching, waiting. Mm. <laughs> and then that. I realized that that's absurd <laughs> because I've shot many birds in real life and torn them apart with my hands and eaten them. And 
they were there were no metal bits in there. Riddle me this: random. Is the birds aren't real movement dinosaur denial? Are oh, they, I'm familiar with the dinosaur denial movement as well. Are they the same people though? Because no. dinosaurs were birds, is my understanding from like. A, a, a oh well, you would have to believe. Every channel show. These are not the type of people who believe in evolution. Um, so, so you're gonna you're going down two or three paths that they're just not gonna go with. Uh, they believe that um, fossils are a hoax um, because oh. the first dinosaur wasn't discovered until. And I'm just making a year up here, but like. It was like 250 years ago when the first dinosaur was ever discovered, the first fossils. And then all of a sudden they're prop they're finding them everywhere. And they're like, yeah. you're telling me we didn't find one for all of human history until like Jimmy Popcorn did in 1797. <laughs> and then he then he opened up a circus showing them off. Bullshit. The resin casts. As if like before that, you know, when people stumbled upon it, they're like, man, this must have been one hell of a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you're looking at in ancient depictions of dragons uh, is, is people discovered dinosaur fossils and they're like, holy fucking shit, this must have been a dragon. Yeah, just putting the pieces together. You know? yeah. so I, I'll have to look more into the birds aren't real. I, I do like this t-shirt. I might buy it of mm -hmm. like the old propaganda style art but instead of like some like masked you know illuminati puppeteering the media and the government it's just a bird <laughs> yeah i don't think there'd be a whole birds aren't real.com website if birds were real that's true yeah that's true <laughs> and that is flawless logic <laughs> <laughs> what's a conspiracy theory that you actually believe and you can't you can't just say like the ones that have been literally proven to be like holy shit we really did do that gulf of tonkin thing holy crap we really did test STDs on the Tuskegee uh, in, in, in the Tuskegee experiments on African Americans. Like, like you can't come up with one of the ones that is like on Wikipedia, factual. U.S. government has admitted to already. What's one that you believe in that's still shadowy? Man, that's that's tough. Cause there, I was lizard people. Hmm. No, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> What is one? So I keep, I always draw the, I hit the same well on this. I want to come up with a different one for the show, but I always hit yeah. the, uh, the plane in Pennsylvania where the guy said, let's oh, roll sure. and went down. And I think it was shot down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I recently watched a lot of stuff about that and how like the, the, the coroner showed up to like identify, like label the bodies or whatever, looked around for 10 minutes and was just like, uh, I'm going home. And they're like, why? It's like, there's nothing out there. It looks like there's just a hole in the ground. There's no wreckage. There's no wreckage. Like, like there's just, I'm mm -hmm. more of the thought process here. Here was the conspiracy theory that was being put forward in, in all the material that I recently looked into with my spare time is that it didn't even go down. They were saying that they just shot a missile into the ground and scattered a little rubbish, rubbish around. And then they landed the plane somewhere and smoked all the people that were on the plane, killed them. Jesus. That's a lot more complicated than just yeah. shooting it down. I uh, see, but I, I, I saw the engine and so like when I did that conspiracy debunking PowerPoint thing, you sure you found the engine? There was, I, well, I remember the photo of the engine and I remember how it hit the dirt. And uh, one of my points was how scattered the plane was, how parts yeah. of it were here. And I could have been lied to last week. Like, I, like, spe speaking of well, that certainly. bit we did a while back, Woody, yeah. we, 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 we need to do that again, like the structured conspiracy thing. We, we, mm -hmm. Let's do that next week. That'd be fun. I'm just doing uh, the same one again. Just doing the same <laughs> one. But, I, but I, I remember how fucking funny it was that Woody had a PowerPoint and like you would make a point and then authoritatively be like, next slot <laughs> and next. Slot. I wanted you to follow along. <laughs> that was really, that was really it's like that scene in JFK. Back and to the left, back and to the left. I don't know what happened with the JFK thing, but I do believe it was more complicated than just Oswald doing that. Yeah, I think like, there, there were more people in play. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think who did it? I, but. Yeah, I don't know who did it either, but I, I think there's definitely a conspiracy at foot, uh, at play there. You know, I, I think anytime that, there's a, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Anytime there's a president, he's going to have a lot of people who are against him. You know, that mm -hmm. there's of course the other political side, and in his case, there was like mafia and the Cuba and then the Cubans and a bunch of, you know, the, you could just say Trump right now. Does anyone want to kill Trump? Oh, well, surely lots of people do, you know, he, he's in a couple of trade wars. There's motivation there. He's uh, unpopular with the blue team. There's motivation there. You know, you, you could look all over and find people who haven't acted as far as I know, but mm -hmm. good. Sure. Sure. Um, 
oh shit, I just forgot my conspiracy theory, the thing that, oh, I think that there have been previous uh, civilizations that were advanced that got wiped out in the past. How advanced Mm. are you talking about here? Because they they got to the stage of like large stone structures and organized society. Like uh, like Egyptian style level organized and how government. Were they wiped out an epidemic. Uh, um, well, well, that that book that I, I you know that I've read with the, from the Graham Cochran guy, he suggests that it was the um, uh, uh, a comet strike that happened. <laughs> I want to say fourteen thousand years ago. I was afraid that, you were about to say pandemic. No, <laughs> no, it was um, it, and it it triggered this uh, geologically proven period of uh, of global cooling called the Younger Dryas. Where like a lot of the 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 major uh, animal animals in the world went extinct, and he thinks that that was the cataclysm that like swept the earth clean of of like whatever civilizations existed. Undesirables. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. So that's the one that I I, I think is I've just watched. I, Why I, are there okay, no okay. listen? Okay. okay. I, I I I it might not be a conspiracy, but it's more of like a science sci- like a. a, a astrology conspiracy mm-hmm. where there is this uh, um this barrier uh, civilizations will reach and then they'll just go extinct the the, the great the, filter the, right the great Before filter we... right yeah that's oh it. yeah and that's i think that's, that's dude that's interesting. really i've never heard of that oh no i wish i could no. it's incredibly fascinating <clears throat> someone who understood it more filter. completely explained it to you would be cool but it, the the, the core, Kyle, you want to take a shot at it, it sounds like you I, do. i believe that the, the the core part of it is there's this question and it is why are we not with our radio telescopes and our listening devices able to detect intelligent life that's at least able to send out a radio signal or a laser mm-hmm. signal of some kind and so the great filter is the answer to that it's it's all of these filters that a that not just a society but a life form has to evolve through to get to that point and uh, you know war and plague or uh, you know all of the four horsemen are part of that filter and uh, it's it's really interesting theory like i i, I like the, i like to go down those is... like, YouTube the question is, are, is that filter that so 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 pretty much we're going into the right direction. Uh, the one with radio waves is even more complicated because us as a civilization mm. might only use radio waves for a few hundred years or thousand years, which in the scale of the universe is like nothing. Right. So it'll just see it for a thousand years and then you won't see it. But pretty much the question is, why are we still alone in the universe? Right, they feel like this is like an educational. Even even, a, even yeah. our planet yeah. has gotten to the point where we send satellites out past Pluto outside our solar mm-hmm. system. You would think that. It, so there's one possibility is that we're first, that we're the most advanced society to have ever existed. But as a numbers game, that seems improbable, right? That we're literally the most advanced society to have ever existed in the universe. That that seems improbable. There's so many planets. So well, many you may have touched on it. To have ever existed, no. To still exist, yes. Right. So, right. so well, wait, wait, wait. Well, there are different questions. Well, if you know? it, right. So if if what I said, we are the most to have ever existed, then there isn't a great filter. We're first, but mm-hmm. that seems unlikely. So no, 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 no. That's get... not. That's incorrect. So <laughs> the thing about the great filter, strip. you asked for someone to be able to explain it, guys. I'm trying to explain it here. Okay. <laughs> so the great filter is the filter that. Um, you know, if a civilization gets to a point, they go extinct. And this could be, there's tons of different theories what it could be. It could be, for example, uh, you know, star goes supernova, star blows up, whatever star, you know, uh, we cannot leave our solar system in time. That's a possibility. Another possibility is that we'll never be able to leave our uh, Milky Way galaxy. Uh, But some other stuff that's even more interesting is that it could be that humans won't be interested anymore in a thousand years to try and explore. For example, if uh, VR and and AR and all those things, uh, you know, let's say we create the matrix and we can live inside of our uh, inside of our simulation, why would we still want to explore if you can explore the entire universe within, right? Anyways, yeah, hmm. I was headed to that before be I was cut off. Okay, okay, wait, wait, yeah, yeah. wait, wait. No, so <laughs> wait, 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 there is wait, wait. a possibility no, no, no. that. Oh my gosh, stop it. You took the floor from me, told me I was wrong, and then I wasn't. So there is a possibility that there is no filter and that we're first, but that's improbable, right? So then we're head to where Kreb was saying that there is a filter 
And what is that filter? Is that filter that you lose interest? That the, it, it could be that that filter is there's an aggressive society out there. And anytime they find them, they eliminate them. So it seems like there's none. And once we do make contact with someone, it's, it's the end for us. Go on. It's also possible that we've already passed the filter, right? So if you look back at history, the amount of mass extinctions, uh, uh, you know, we've survived, the mass, uh, uh, the amount of like <clears throat> this, uh, you know, the whole coronavirus situation could have wiped everything out, right? Um, I mean, it didn't, and it probably yeah. won't, uh, but it could have been it. Um, so, so it's like, did we pass it already? Or are we going towards it? Or are there multiple filters? Um, there's definitely multiple filters, yes. right? Um, you know, th there's the zoo hypothesis, right? The galactic zoo hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is this? These that are is... interesting conspiracy theories. Wait, that yes. we're a part of a zoo where they took the, like... Yeah. That there are intelligent of... alien life forms out there and they just put up some sort of subspaced road sign out there that said, humans ahead, don't contact. And they're just allowing us mm -hmm. to evolve like, like fucking microbes in a petri dish and they're, exactly. they're not going to interfere and they're just watching it's like it's that south like park where are... they they have they get canceled and you know the producers of the show the glorksians or whatever are like oh no we put everything on earth to see how it would go you think that's how the entire universe works no there's a planet of deer a planet of asians a planet of birds <laughs> like, <laughs> the planet of asians so, yeah, yeah, so, that's, what, that's what the line was everybody's so, just so, crashing so. into each other all day there's and a whole there's planet a few of ways nothing but to deer. look at it there's there's a few ways to look at it. So you can say, all right, well, this is a tribe in the Amazon and we will not lay contact with them. We just let them live and this and that. Sometimes you see they see a plane fly over and they're like, oh, what's that? And that's the equivalent of us humans seeing UFOs, right? Mm -hmm. That's one possibility. The other one is that these aliens are so much smarter than humans that they'll look at us and go, what's the point of us communicating with an ant? right yeah what's the point they they won't ever understand this i hate that so one these, I, I'm, I don't why? buy into that one because what? i think that like because there are tons of humans who go and study ants and spend their whole fucking life staring at ants and learning about ants and every time i see a reddit gif of like a line of ants walking next to a line of termites and all the ants are like bucked up like don't fuck with the ant line and all the termites are like bucked up like don't you fuck with the termite line I'm just like, <laughs> fascinating they're in a standoff while the workers carry the food and do their fucking colony shit and then the workers are at the corner like don't you fuck with our shit don't you fuck with our shit termite I, i'm fascinated by that so i think that no matter how advanced they are and how inferior we are technologically, evolutionarily but speaking. Kyle won me fast. over. I'm, I was I was anti-Kyle at the start no, of that. No, no. He turned me around. I want to see some ant termite fights now. It's I'm cool down. shit. I'm yeah. going to defend this. I need to defend this. So now the question is, are ants able to recognize humans observing them? And I don't think so. They might see, hey, there's something there, but they might not understand what that is. And yeah, the they don't know they're part of like be... a David Attenborough special. Uh, when exactly. you break out the magnifying glass and torture them, they start to get the message. Yeah, but then they just they just do that cool ant thing and just reevaluate the line and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, tight. yeah, man, Kyle, that that is a really good comparison. I always I, yeah. I, I thought I'd be same fa thing. we're fascinated by those things. Like 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 how many nature documentaries are there? When I see the one about bugs, I'm like, ooh, I like these. Like I can only watch the penguins do their shit so many times, but these ants, I. I don't, I don't know anything. Oh, a leaf cutter ant. What? They they don't even eat the leaves? They just feed them? What? They're not eating the leaves. They're they're taking the leaves, leaf cuttings, putting them down in the colony and growing some sort of mold like on them or something. Yeah. yeah, fungus on them. And then they eat the fungus. These are farmer ants, not leaf eating ants. I had no idea. And it's There's a, a lot of interesting mm -hmm. stuff. If I see two snails fucking, which I don't think they even fuck. I think one lays eggs and, and the other comes so around. Hot. I'm not sure. I'm like, oh, that's how they do it? I'm going to check this out. If I saw two, two wildebeests making babies, if I saw two chickens, well, they don't fuck, but if I saw two chickens hypothetically <laughs> having sex, then, then that would be a thing, or dolphins or whatever. Why wouldn't they check out our wars, our reproduction? Those things are inherently interesting. I, they I, might I think be they checking are. it out. Yeah. One I of the things that, that's, that's for sure, though, is like, so one of the problems with them even hiding themselves from us is, is there are, um, I, I don't remember what the scale is called, but there's this scale of like civilization levels. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this is a, a tier one civilization. Is it based on how much uh, sun energy they harness? How, 
it's, it's that, that's based, where yes. that's where we're ending up. It, it, it's it's a technological uh, advancement scale, and mm -hmm. and up at the top is when is is what we believe will eventually happen, and that is when they have they're harnessing the complete power of a star with a Dyson sphere, and the whole thing is like we're not no, seeing that's, that's, any that's Dyson that. spheres. So it's called it's called the Kardashev scale. A type one civilization, also called a planetary civilization, can use and store all the all of the energy available on its planet. A type two, called a stellar civilization, can use and control energy at the scale of its stellar system. And a type three civilization, also called a galactic civilization, can control energy at the scale of its entire host galaxy. Yeah. So the so idea we, we, is we, that we're, probably, we're like level zero then. Yeah, we're yeah. level zero there. Point something. Uh, the we've got solar panels. Seven. <laughs> Dude, that that's so dumb. That the guy who made that scale, I closed the window up, but Kadushev or whatever. You, you could have bullshitted Artichef. a couple levels below where we already <laughs> right? so that we felt fire. a little better about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't want to come in we on discovered. level zero. Like, we've done shit. We should no, be no, no, like Randy level Marsh two, measuring five, it. Zero point seven, guys. We're almost The adjusted there. penis seven. size is <laughs> oh, the yaw, our the adjusted the shaft. <laughs> our adjusted Kardashev scale <laughs> is a 4.7. 4.7. <laughs> We're a little 4.7 so, civilization. Yeah. Did so you say we're point seven? Do you know something that, or do we just we're at make 0. a joke? 7, 0. Are we really? 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So yeah, the, this uh, this this scientist, I, I don't know his first name. I know his last name's Dyson. He uh, he came up with the, he theorized that the you could day. completely uh, enclose a star in a mechanism that would take you know 100 percent of its light energy, or you know there are lesser ways to do. It. You could just surround it with satellites. Uh, like like thousands and thousands, or maybe start out with one, and then two, and then three, but you you'd surround the sun at close range with these satellites that are beaming the energy back to your planet, and uh, and the idea is that we're like, well, eventually that that just makes sense that you would need that kind of power source, and that would yeah. be the the easiest way to do it. We should be able to see those though, because they should they uh, we can detect gravity by the way it bends light with our radio telescopes, right? Mm. Yeah. So, so, we, so it should be almost like in the same way we detect black holes, we should be able to detect Dyson spheres. It would be no, no, tough, no, no, though. No, 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 no. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, you're going into the right direction, but unless I'm wrong, we can detect the drop in uh, light intensity. So when we look at a star, and uh, all of a sudden, um, yeah. you know, it it the light intensity drops because, for example, a planet goes in front of it, <clears throat> then we know, okay, that has a planet. It has another planet. It has another planet. But if all of a sudden a star starts dimming halfway and it starts dimming more and then more and more and more, then we know, okay, hey, there is a possibility that there is a civilization over there which has created a Dyson sphere. But that's just if, if we are literally viewing, and of course it, we're looking back in time because of the speed of light, but that's just in case we're looking at a partial Dyson sphere or yeah. mid-construction mm -hmm. of a full Dyson sphere. Yeah. I'm describing like a scenario in which... An, a, a, the Dyson sphere has been there for millennia, right? But then you know? the gra gravitational waves will just pass through. The gra gravity just doesn't care. There's a Dyson sphere there. Um, Everything with the, mass has gravity. So the Dyson yeah, sphere. Yeah, so, so it would have an enormous have amount of mass. It, yeah. Not only the star's mass, but the Dyson sphere would even add to that, and the and it would bend the light of the stars behind it. And we could detect that, and no, it would also there would oh, also be oh, there would also oh, be a a a, a, a like gravitational a area out there that has planets rotating it, which would be funny. For them to, it would be like, what, what are they rotating? So what hmm. you're saying is like, it would be like a black hole, but it wouldn't be as strong as a black hole. It would be like in between, just a little bit stronger than a star. It would sure. be. Is that Dyson a scientist or was he just like, he's the vacuum guy. He's the vacuum <laughs> guy. Sucking out. Have you ever experienced a $550 vacuum cleaner? Now you can say you have. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm going to go ahead and buy a fucking no, Hoover, Dirt, bitch. <laughs> Dirt devil. Yeah, uh, that stuff's really fascinating to me. I love going, watching those, um, those those documentaries about space, and uh, and I, I like going down the YouTube rabbit hole. I find that that's even more enjoyable because, you know, they're, they're not selling you anything. There's no commercial breaks. It's just, it's just often a, a, a professor or a physicist of some kind, and he's really breaking things down on a marker board. Have we talked he about Kennedy cool. on the show, like like you with us? Never. I know, I know the show has all. talked about Kennedy, you know, like everybody has, but but have we ever had the Kennedy talk? Uh, with you? I think it got passively mentioned on the episode that Woody wasn't here for. I've uh, like Harley and everyone was on. Yeah. I remember watching. I don't think we talked uh, much though. I liked it. it. I don't know too much about it. Did Oliver Stone make the movie, the JFK movie? Is that who made yes, it? Yes. Yeah. 
I remember watching remember that. Remember your king. Yeah, that's the Oliver Stone movie. I remember that. Anyone who's never seen JFK, you should watch it. It's a tremendous film. Great cast. Got our boy Kevin Spacey <clears throat> in there. And uh, it, it, I remember at the end of it, there's something. Yeah, his boy is Kevin <laughs> Spacey. Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> it's got your boy. <laughs> Part of the gang, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. We go all, way back. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle is president of the Kevin Stacey Stan Club. <laughs> <laughs> I like that our boys are like Kevin Spacey and I don't know who's the fucking guy who didn't kill himself. Epstein. Oh, Epstein. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he is not our boy. I don't know. I don't know. He's He's not, he was just Epstein he was just, just a fun loving playboy who liked to have a good time. <clears throat> yeah. Jesus. Is what That's I've heard. Hot. Is what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if that wasn't it, then surely that all that information with Ghislaine's list, they would have looked into it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what the guard at the penitentiary told me. I don't know what, yeah. what else is going on. <laughs> that's what the guy who wasn't in prison there, the, the former cop with his pit bulls and his 22 inch arms, that's what he told you before the cameras went out. With his the, magical uh, camera racing capabilities. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of JFK, wild. though, there's a part where, I don't know, there's some text on the screen maybe, and they're like, they give a date in roughly 2020 when they're, like, they're going to open these files and they'll be available for the public. And then, like, that came, right? You're probably like, oh, yeah, where's this fight? They, 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 like, pushed it forward again. They pushed it forward again. They're like, nah, we changed their mind. No shit. <laughs> Kick the can down the road. No, I remember my dad looked that. at me. My dad, I guess, didn't think he'd live to 2020 at the time. He was like, make sure that you look into that. <laughs> like, back then, I remember so well. <laughs> like, 30 years ago. Like, make sure you look into that. I, I want Wendy to, to get even, red pills Even on more. And so, so the JFK files are mm -hmm. a whole thing. There's, like, hundreds of pages of declassified CIA info that mm -hmm. you mentioned. My last video about the, uh, the vampire attacks, part of it actually came from the JFK files. So it's like this book of information. And then what they did is they took stuff like JFK – stuff relating to MLK uh, Nazi groups in South America. And they released like a few pages and then redacted the rest. And it was like, that'll be another 10, 20 years. Like, all right. So they acknowledge it exists, but they're like, these 40 pages? No. What, 24? When we're all dead, that's when you can look at it. <laughs> and then the people alive then will be like, nah, nah. Let's, push that. <laughs> Let's kick that can a little further down the road. I, and, I haven't and then seen Kyle tells that. his son, like, you look out for that <laughs> whenever that comes around. Well, I don't know if it's true, but it, it's right here. Zach wrote it. <laughs> White House <laughs> delays the, re the release of secret JFK assassination records, citing COVID-19. Damn. That sounds well, yeah, like them. That's dangerous. Yeah. That's you can't be you know, reading that on your phone. Hey, that's what killed JFK. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I've heard it's a good. I've heard the JFK movie is good and and entertaining, but like, I, I don't even know what their claim is for who did it in the JFK movie, like CIA or something. I guess based on the redacted thing, but we know for sure that that's not the full story in that movie. Correct. Like. Yeah. The, the, if the people out there were powerful enough to kill JFK, they're powerful enough to kill someone trying to tell the story of how JFK was killed, you know? Like, yeah. the, they wouldn't a allow weird... a movie like that to come out yeah, if it was really weird... spilling, like, state secret beans, you know? There's a lot of yeah. weird stuff with the Cubans uh, and with Ka and with, um, with, with, uh, with with Oswald. I've never thought the mob stuff was particularly compelling, but the Cuban stuff, the um um all the CIA stuff um with Oswald um and then there's that one guy who's uh Ru the, all the Ruby stuff is really weird Jack Ruby yeah he was then, in the mob or mob connected right yeah he did uh well he was more of like an enforcer for random stuff uh like mob connection yes but he wasn't in the mob he wasn't like uh, a okay. member or anything yeah the whole thing's wild uh and then and then that shot that he supposedly made. I don't know. That's, and then they killed his brother. After firing three shots out of a bolt action in like two seconds. Like that guy had sleight of hand on up there. <laughs> 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 yeah, like what, what's there. hard to do, and like if you've never like tried to do it in real if you've only played video games with scoped guns, like shooting the gun and then chambering a new round and then putting it back up to your ear and getting that sight picture and then kind of getting settled into it, like mm -hmm. that... It seems quick, but it's precious seconds that you need if you're trying to shoot a guy driving away from you in a fucking Lincoln or whatever. Is, is you the know? claim three? You know? it, it, they say it was three bolt action shots. Yes, three bolt action shots out of a six five Carcano rifle. Um, 
as he was driving away, fired in the time span of a little over three seconds, if I remember correctly. So the first shot was a miss. It supposedly, it skipped off the pavement and hit a guy who was walking down the street. The second shot is the magic bullet. That's the one that supposedly, hold up, let me think, I'm JFK. It hit him in the neck, went forward into his arm, down into his thigh, out of the front of his knee, into the seat in front of him, and hit the governor in the back, and was perfectly intact. And then the <laughs> third, that's why whenever, when you watch the uh, Zapruder film, he's holding his neck, because he had just been shot in the neck. So he's leaned over holding his neck, and then the third shot was the one through the head. So oh. yeah, three shots, like super fast, from a bookstore window, several hundred feet back, just a lot of a lot of variables happening at once. So is, um, do you not think that Lee Harvey, like you think he was maybe framed or where does he kind of fit into the mix? Uh, so leave Har Yes. Yeah. There's the magic bullet. So, yeah. Into the back, then the neck, then the arm, then the leg. Uh, and then surprisingly was all in one piece. In If in court, they call it the magic bullet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they tend to not do that so much. Um, yeah. But let's do weird stuff. Um, I don't know about all that shit. And then it being pristine at the end is the real weird thing because they get all warped yeah. up and and beat up after hitting bones and stuff. And I don't know. Car it looks like there were like six points of contact in that graphic. Like that would ball up and fuck a bullet up, right? If it's like full that. metal jacket, it stays pointy. Like, like, like really? Yeah, it's not going to mushroom back. It's going to stay. Uh, and that is full metal jacket. It's going to stay together. But it's gonna look worse than that. Um, that yeah. that would be a real pristine bullet if you found that like out on the sand at a firing range, you know, downrange. If you go downrange at like Knob Creek in Kentucky, um, millions of rounds have been fired that way. And so if you just go down there, start like kicking dirt, you could just piles of the lead, you know, the projectiles, just mm -hmm. every kind you can imagine. Like like, and you can see that like well, not too many are pristine unless it. Unless it was. I got him. Let's see, no, I I got him. You guys were so still, I couldn't tell if all of you froze. I'm like, maybe it's me. No. You're good. You're good now. You're good yeah, now. You said Kyle. unless it, it, they wouldn't be, the bullets would not be pristine unless. Um, um, unless you hit sand or something. It was like, 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 like um, we would shoot bullets into, uh, you know, that rubber stuff they use for landscaping. You can mm -hmm. fill up like a trash can up with that and use that as a bullet stop. If you're doing like ammo tests and stuff. You shoot right in, it'll catch the bullet. The bullet's in pretty pristine condition because it's going through soft rubber. But when you hit dirt and rocks and shit, the bullets get mangled. I don't know. You, whenever I've hit animals and recovered them, they were mangled too. Uh, I don't know about all that. You know, so I they call it a magic the, bullet for a reason. They so, could hard to kill that guy. Yeah. What was yeah, the, the Lee Harvey? Did. Like, what, so what, what, yeah. I'm not positive about this one because I haven't like dove into the research regarding him specifically. Whenever I was doing my MLK assassination video, I saw this and like quickly followed it and I was like, all right. Whenever I do. Whenever I remake a full board JFK video, I will come back to this. Um, but Lee Harvey Oswald was an employee at the bookstore, and according to official records, he was a uh, he was a communist sympathizer. Didn't like JFK. It was during the Cold War, so they just mm -hmm. called him a commie because that was the idea. Um, so he is <laughs> wait wait. Um, <laughs> He supposedly just decided that he was going to kill the president whenever he heard that the president was going along that area. Um, so he, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going branded right now. D does okay. something need to be said? Um, no, no, no. You're... The, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I heard the the mic come on, and I was like, oh, well, what, what's going on? It's <laughs> never happened before. Is yeah, that we heard you typing audio, Zach. audio, and we heard him typing and. That's why. That's why I froze up. I'm like, is is this an emergency announcement? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I, I thought it was just going to stop. No big deal. Russia you're good. You're good. You're good. Nukes at last. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> they, they're getting uh, first. They got Kyle. Now they got Zach. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so st to stay on the train of thought, supposedly Lee Harvey Oswald just hated the president, and the United States wanted to kill him. According to a report, this was the quick thing I saw I haven't fully looked into. The initial police report is that, when because the police ran into the building, that mm -hmm. whenever they ran into the building, Lee Harvey Oswald was downstairs working, according to, like, 
So like, again, this one report yeah. that I haven't validated that he was just downstairs working there, sweeping the floor or whatever. And then one of the police officers was murdered. Uh, supposedly the first guy who ran into Oswald got shot. Uh, and then Oswald escaped out of the bookstore and to an old movie theater, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the police followed them there and arrested him. But that initial police report says that when they got in, Oswald was just there. He wasn't upstairs shooting another cop with a gun. So the, And then that report disappeared from the official record later. So the theory is that Oswald had, was set up to be the fall guy or the mm -hmm. patsy. Um, and then later they just took that record out so that it would better fit the narrative that Oswald was the shooter. Um, on top of that, whenever Oswald was being held by the police, he kept saying, like, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, and then whenever they explained, like, the shooting and everything, he said, oh, so I'm the patsy. I'm the fall guy. That's how this is going to work. And then he gets shot mm -hmm. by Jack Ruby. So a lot of people are dubious over the uh, Oswald connection. Um, uh, there's think a Jack Ruby may have killed him to cover up anything you yes. want to say? Yeah, or? yeah. So oh. th that, that's, that's the theory. So Jack yeah. Ruby was a mob enforcer. He had carried out, like, jobs for th – that's why I said he wasn't specifically in the mob. He was more like a contractor. Mm -hmm. Um he supposedly just loved the president so much uh, that he decided to shoot the guy as he was being transferred to interrogation out of the kindness of his own heart. Um, yeah. So he gets gunned down. And then whenever they arrest him, he's like, oh, I just like the president. And it turns out he had cancer uh, and he died four months later. It was four, mm -hmm. so, four yeah, months or four years uh, soon after. And um, if I remember correctly, his family, like, that he had family debt and like hospital bills from his cancer that disappeared after he shot Oswald. So, hmm. That's and that was part of the, a lot of people throw that towards uh, the mob theory. They're like, Oh, well, maybe the mob hired him to do it to pay off his debt. It's like, yeah, the CIA, that's the mob you're looking yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> they have a name and everything. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and they can do so that's, that's they like want. the Oswald theory and like the Ruby theory and all that. And of course, it goes into more of like there being a second shooter, the whole grassy knoll thing and all that. So what is the grassy knoll thing? I've always heard that like as a joke from Dale Gribble in King of the Hill. And I never looked like what is that all theory? Right. <laughs> so uh, Kennedy is in the back. Sorry. Go ahead, Kyle. Oh, I just said pocket sand quietly. Oh. <laughs> my, <God's end. laughs> my, my <problem>. <laughs> so kennedy's in the lincoln uh he's going down the street and lee harvey oswald is in a bookstore behind him like to his like back right there is a grassy knoll as it's been dubbed which is a small hill underneath a tree by a fence to like his forward right both on the right side of the vehicle but the grassy knolls in front of him the only footage that we still have is of the shooting is the Sabruder film. That is the film. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there's a picture of the grass, you know, like up towards where the trees are back there, like the shadowy area. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that wall's still there today, if I remember correctly, but like, the whole, it's like a little field essentially. Um, so anyway, the only footage that we have is of the Sabruder film. There was a cameraman standing on the same side of the vehicle of the camera shot we just saw who was filming the whole thing. So he filmed, or sorry, on the opposite side, he would have been over near the grassy knoll filming. Mm -hmm. So he's filming the whole thing and he films from that angle as the shots ring out and as Kennedy gets killed. In the footage on the Zapruder film, you can see that there is someone else across the street who is also filming on a camera. So that should be the solution, right? Because if our cameraman, the Zapruder cameraman's back here, and the shooter's over to his right, then the person on the other side of the street should have an angle of that. And supposedly, well, not supposedly, this is a fact, they recovered that footage and brought it into court during the trial that, like, the movie JFK is about and all that. So, yeah, so see how the Pruder position is, like, next to the grassy knoll dude? Over there where the mouse is on the right side of the road is where this mystery cameraman was. So anyway, okay. that footage makes its way into court and it was not shown publicly. It was shown to a private jury. <laughs> the, the jury said that the evidence in the footage was compelling. And the next day, whenever they moved to make it public record, they misplaced the tape. And to this day, it's never been recovered. 
They just the, oh, the no. biggest trial ever. They're like, oh, we misfiled it. I guess it's just womp, it's womp. not here anymore. Uh, but according to, to the to, luck, yeah. Oh. And, uh, according <laughs> to man, people, I hope some CIA guy didn't lose his job over that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Can you imagine? He worked stress? hard to file that paperwork, <laughs> man. Uh, no. According to the people who did see it. They're at the grassy knoll, which is, again, the position in the diagram. Whenever Kennedy's head explodes and he actually gets shot, there is a large puff of smoke from the grassy knoll. And that also lines up because Kennedy was in the Lincoln lean down like this. And whenever he got shot, supposedly from up here, his head jerked backwards and his whole body flew out the back. Which, yeah, your muscles can do weird stuff when you get shot. But it's much more likely if he was shot from the front that his head would shoot backwards like that rather than getting shot in the back of the head and, you know, having that reaction. Yeah, that just, so the idea yeah, is yeah. that the shooter was in front of him at the grassy knoll rather than behind him at the bookstore. Uh, there's also like the three right, bullets. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> the three bullets is also widely contested. Um, for example, supposedly the first shot's the one that skipped across the pavement and hit the guy watching the parade go by, right? Well, according to that guy's account, he heard a gunshot and stopped and then looked and then got struck in the leg. So supposedly, again, according to the theory, the grassy knoll guy fired first and then whoever's in the book, because there was someone in the bookstore, whoever mm -hmm. was in the bookstore, that shot is the one that hit him. Because there's no way this guy heard a gunshot and was like, I wonder what that could be. And then that gave enough time for the bullet to skip and hit him. No. Um, yeah. That's not how that's not how speed works. That's well, not how speed works. Yeah, it, it would it, have to be some wacky shit, but it's possible. That's the fun thing. Like that bullet it, would have been like ding dong ding, and he hears <laughs> bang. <laughs> the bullet's still going bing bang ding. <laughs> like it's like that. a Looney Tunes cartoon yeah. jumping yeah. all around the square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and perfectly intact. <laughs> yeah, I never knew how much bullets bust until I started shooting a lot of racers, specifically like. Not just bang, 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 but when you've got like a belted machine gun shooting hundreds of tracers mm -hmm. at like that area and you're hitting like trees and stumps and rocks and hard pieces of dirt and soft pieces of dirt and water. Well, let's start making sharp turns that you don't think are like physically possible. They just make a right turn and they're already going 3,000 yep. feet per second and they just yeah. hang a left. I've had that <laughs> same experience. I shot a, a saw. People know this is a belt-fed machine gun. It was on the ground with a bipod, and we were shooting it at a car. And uh, yeah, after the bullets hit the car, in my mind, they vanish, turn to powder, yeah. stop, disappear. Or yes, yeah, stop. yeah. See, like, oh. The CIA thinks that way too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, because they're traces, you can really see where they're going, and they're just zinging all over the place. Sometimes back at you, they're they do crazy things. And Kyle's right, like. That story they tell is improbable, but not impossible. So yeah. it what's crazy is it's like, okay, you're expecting me to believe that some wonky shit happened the day a president died. I'm not going to buy that. I'm, yeah. Look, a president already died today, so I'm going to just assume everything else went like it normally does in our plane of existence and assume <laughs> y'all had a guy hiding over there, one up there, probably a third we don't know about who just didn't have a clean shot. Like, right. I, yeah. I, I just I think they conspired to kill that guy, and there's just so many reasons. He was a he was a fly in the pudding, or whatever they say. And the ointment is fly it? in the ointment. ointment. Yep. Yeah. That's what yeah. Biden was talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fly, and the ointment, a fly, and the ointment, fly, fly, tried to get rid of me, but I'm stuck like a fly. And the ointment, yeah, the, there there was there was a lot of reasons they would have wanted him dead. They also did suspicious stuff that day. Like every time the president goes somewhere, they put Secret Service everywhere. And uh, the day of the Dallas drive, the Secret Service got together and they were like, um, hey, there's something like, I think the number was 1,200 windows he's going to be driving by. That's too many to cover. Let's just, no security today. <laughs> I did not know about he's, that. He's, he's too exposed. No one watch him. <laughs> it's just a wasted effort. Let's hope. Like, <laughs> like that, 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 that can make he's sense. He's in God's hands were, now. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't they just say, let's not CIA's do it. capable hands. Let's put the fucking top up. <laughs> Whose idea was the top down? I, I I always think back to that scene in The Office when um when Michael is driving and Dwight's in the passenger seat of his convertible PT Cruiser and Dwight 
thinks it's so cool to let the top down, but it's the middle of winter. And he's like, and he's already unbuckled them and they're coming down and it's, there's no choice anymore. I just imagine that shitty governor of Texas wanted his picture taken with a president. He was like, no, 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 come on, come on. And he's like twisting power. Put the like, top down. Put yeah. the top down. And they have, like the, the wife is like, fuck, this guy's an asshole. Like, ah, is that we'll the, the view from the grassy knoll? Oh. This would have been where the shooter was. Yeah. Wait, there could be clues on the fence. All right. That's- <laughs> Look, he wrote his name right there. <laughs> oh. his, name's, his name's Roy Sanchez. Oh. <laughs> That's so Roy close. Sanchez, you son of a gun. The Little trees Lewis know. I like. Monroe, I like that. Man. The trees know. That's pretty good. That goes on. Yeah, that's good. The trees know. That's good. That's a. Dude. That's a lot closer than I thought it was. The way that looked, like I don't know where he was when he got shot in perspective to like where that camera was just sitting. But if you were trying to shoot a guy in that suburban or whatever down there, that wouldn't be a challenge at all. It does. Like I thought that same Kyle's thing, play. but also I don't know. You know how cameras work. I, I feel like I can't take it at face value. I was just kind of looking at the sidewalk and the steps and kind of like doing it's, a little. It's I not feel a like long I could shot grab at all. It's like 80, oh. 70, 80 feet maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. I have 70, a lens that would make that look He's like a hard dead. shot and an easy He's shot. He's super dead at 70 or 80 feet. Um, <laughs> Especially if you miss and you have a guy to cover your ass. Yeah, you've got like, what's funny is if that's true and they each fired like three shots, right? They were horrific. For like a couple seconds, it was like the Wild West. Just bam, 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 bam. He's yeah. missing all the shots. They're <laughs> skipping over the car. <laughs> yeah. Too bad he couldn't like Mr. Magoo his way out of that. Like he, just, he, he reaches down to tie his shoes at the right time. It's like, it's like the tires are popping behind him as he goes the street. <laughs> Yeah. That'd be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not the word we live. Uh, hey, and then they killed Bobby. <laughs> and then they killed Bobby. Ken- was that go- that guy's name was like Sir Han uh, right? Something like Bobby that. Kennedy? Yeah, the, the guy, the guy who showed up and shot him in a kitchen that the CIA, the Secret Service, just let him into, and then he gets shot, and then they burn the evidence. <laughs> They have to. They did it. This. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's 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 really weird. I you know like like I think we might be living. I, I think the, that America may, may have died sometime around that period in history, and we're just like the the leftovers. We're that, like that, riding they, the corpse as long as it'll go. Conspiracy theory is a tentpole topic around here. Hmm. What what other conspiracy theory do you believe in, Tucker? See, I said that without really thinking about oh, what well. other conspiracy theory I believe in, but now I, I believe, all right, here, here's not so conspiracy. I don't believe in aliens, but I do believe in, uh, I do believe in the vast unreported amount of technologically advanced stuff that every government that is capable of producing has locked away and has been doing for since the dawn of time and i firmly believe that every single ufo on that like all of this shit area 51 whatever it is just simply the it's like the sr-71 like tech 20 10 20 years in front of the future that they're just never going to let out like that's the conspiracy theory that i that came to yeah, mind I, I, I agree with that one mostly um i do believe that there are there are aliens i just don't think they've been here i'm like 95 right, percent sure that they've been here there's no, 100 percent people there are aliens that exist somewhere it's sure. just they're not landing here and building the pyramids yeah, the, the universe is like is infinite it just it doesn't make it's, sense for there not to be impossible. yeah and, and but but i you know i want to believe like the little x files tag, tagline i really do want to believe because it'd be so cool if there were aliens that were visiting <laughs> us Maybe and uh, if they had visited us, and, we're like uh, the but, fucking zoo. We're like the the uh, like the orangutans at the zoo. They're like, we'll stop at Earth. We'll check out Earth, and then you can feed them a little bit, and then we'll get back in the car and we'll go over, over to like. Daddy, Bobby. I want to fuck one in the ass. All right, Billy, you All can right. fuck one in the ass. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Earth is just Jeffrey Epstein's island for aliens. Debate me. Oh. oh. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. Oh, I need we, an Advil. Uh, <laughs> my Taylor, mind. Taylor tried convincing us. If you are you are you familiar with um, <laughs> Helen Keller? Yeah, of course. Taylor tried convincing us that Helen Keller was a fraud um, about a month or so ago. Not that and, she was an intentional. That, fraud she, she was, was essentially a ventriloquist dummy for her uh, for her assistant helper, the miracle worker. Um, what was her name? Ann Sullivan. Ann Sullivan. Um, did you know Ann Sullivan was blind, Taylor? Yeah, not deaf. Got my notes. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was hoping that would be. God, you got pages. Those pages. are the single, 
That single space, is it printed front and back? Please tell me. <laughs> it's not front and back. But there was a lot more data that I could have had, and I had to keep it succinct. You I keep think lies Kyle, to yourself. Kyle says, Taylor tried to convince us. I say, Taylor made a compelling point. I went on The Dick Show with Dick Masterson. His audience thought it was a very compelling point as well. I when I presented a it. poll. I a want poll? a poll. Dude, I will and, pull. And look, here's I'm going to win this one. I'm going to win this one. Taylor has pages, right? Taylor's pages. I have a singular piece of evidence. Video yeah, of the fake fucking audio. genius speaking without a hand up her ass, moving her mouth, and in, intelligibly, like, like like carrying on a very hey, wait, oh, intelligent you, conversation. It was apparently think- more than Polly wants a cracker. <laughs> you watch the video of uh, um, not watching her name propaganda. again, Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking horse shit nonsense. <laughs> Look at this video from 1904. <laughs> oh, look at all strong. your evidence came from. No, all of mine is. Look at it; it's typed. <laughs> <laughs> She's close. <laughs> you no, know, you'd be the same guy. You're like, wow, look at this strong man from 1894. Can you believe no one to this day has lifted a cow and heaved it 30 yards? It's like, yeah, of course not. Of course not. Yeah, all those old records. That's all made up. Helen Keller. Where are the blind deaf people talking now? Watch I've said it so many times. Where are Watch they? Watch the video. I didn't say that. I, no, no, no. Wait. You're wait. saying she's a secret retard. Yes. I'm saying secret genius. So I want to pull secret retard or secret genius. It's A or B, folks. And and all, you've heard all of Taylor's evidence. My singular piece of evidence is the fucking video of her speaking. <laughs> and she's literally <laughs> saying, I wish I could speak better. So that What's I the- could share my thoughts and feelings. Wait, is that what she literally like- said? Or did she say, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that Did, did she do this, that? Okay, this, Kyle, this- I will say this. Prepare to get blown the fuck out in this poll. I am when Dude, secret retard, is, it's going to be a waterfall. A waterfall into secret retard. Let's do that poll on the subreddit. Do the poll. Is, do the poll. Is it, was it not said that she went b- deaf and blind after a fever, so she That's was true. hearing and seeing, so she had the basis for all That's this like communication? An at age, at the age of 19 months, though. And the current ah, prognosis the in the year most. 20... Yes. The okay. current prognosis in the year 2020 for someone who goes blind and deaf is that they are not going to be able to communicate. Do you know what meaningful. they call the movie, Taylor? The Miracle Worker. Do you know why they call it that? Yeah, they should have called fucking it miracle. made up. God's they, not don't, they don't call it. That. They don't call it the thing. Just about anybody can do in these certain in this certain uh, circumstance. Worker. They call it the miracle worker. Yeah. Is there an? Is there? A, is there a? No. Is there a documented case of somebody who was both deaf and blind before a twenty before two years that has miracles don't happen all the level. time. If they do, Holy they call shit, it ordinary game up. on ice. Know. <laughs> no, it's see. We're just calling call the Olympic hockey game that time we won. No, t- thank, you, thank you so much, Tucker. I needed someone else on my side here. Yeah, it's she. No, I was just asking. I wasn't on anybody's side. I'm just asking for more empirical data. What? What? Is there any documented example? Okay, Taylor. <laughs> there is one documented example prior oh. to her Pri- prior to her oh never mind it's and even out. less throw reliable it even less it reliable it, it there's none matter. no modern day ones no modern day if, ones if, I can if there's not anybody in the last 30 years i believe taylor because if with modern tech we have no ability to teach somebody i don't care about how improbable it is it's just not going to happen like we have all the tools at our disposal we can literally rebuild eyeballs i don't know if yeah. that's true or not but we're getting close we get like girl we're close or yeah, secret genius. Ears, secret genius. Is. No, secret watch reason. the video of the girl speaking and then tell me that it's all a sham. Don't believe your lying eyes and ears. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's obviously that was a little pun, but uh, yeah, she's uh, she's retarded. Absolutely. There's so many, there's so many more points here that I could regale Tucker with, but I don't want to. No, no, we don't need to rehash. We've we we don't, don't want to rehash. I really wish you I'm already, def- I'm already on I really your side. I wish. I wish you, I wish you had. <laughs> Just as vehemently defended my theory that there was no Holocaust, like that—that that would have the hell, dude. There's no punishment for saying Look, I don't have time to completely retard. disprove the Holocaust. We've we've only got another two and a half, three hours here. But if you want to talk later, Tucker, I'll convince you. Don't worry. Nope, I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna. There's, there's, I'm gonna stand documents and, that I'm gonna need you to download. <laughs> um, I'll we'll not you be doing that. That's pop on a stream and cover it. That's yes, fun. I would like to come on your stream. Wait till there's a lot of people in there, though. Are you doing a sponsored stream anytime soon? That'd be a good night to do it. Um, 
Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. What the, this stream's brought to you by Logitech. Now let's talk about the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a couple jokes there. Can't say, but <laughs> uh, oh, when a good one pops in your head. Oh, are the Jews silencing you again? <laughs> Just all day, every day, man. Just get, I can't get my. It's can't about get my who you can't out. criticize. There, and you know, that's Helen Keller. Apparently, <laughs> she, she's ruling us from the grave. That dumb bitch. You've got reams of documents over there mocking a deaf, retarded girl. She'll a never deaf, blind girl who was not retarded. Wait, so you, so you, so you admit? That... Well, she was retarded, but then she and was... the bull swings this way. <laughs> <laughs> but then she was unretarded by Ann Sullivan. <laughs> You can't once retarded, always retarded. I don't co-sign that. I did no. no, I, no think I, better, I, think, I think a better. I think a better. We know some people is, who have recovered. The needle can never go further than the than than the gauge allows it. Yes. And if you're on the needle, the needle is on the spectrum. You can't get off of it. Yeah, and she was. She didn't even have a. Can we watch the, the video of her speaking, or is that some copyright shit? I mean, it's in black and white. It's copyrighted. It's okay. copyrighted right. by the I don't Helen Keller Foundation. Foundation. I don't know if it's I copyrighted. I just went to a different section of my YouTube channel. I have like <laughs> hundreds of complaints against other Same people that I could file. <laughs> oh my! Right. YouTube start is... locking them down, Woody. It'd be fun. Let's get off a of lot of our PA clips. We never go. <laughs> what are we doing? Dude, you know what I want to do? All I need you to do: go to Helen Keller speaks out on YouTube. Seven million views. All right, it's from 1954. How this is the fucking dark ages. You want to know the like dislike ratio? I'm yeah. sure uh, it's uh, That's how people feel bad. Uh, it looks like they're disabled, frankly. Um, <laughs> Just like her. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that coming too. That was quick. <laughs> um, there's another one here. Yeah, twenty thousand to three hundred on the second one of her talking, and then the third highest ranked video when you search Helen Keller talking is. Taylor proves Helen Keller was a fraud. Oh! <laughs> and how many views does that one have? No, 280,000. No. <laughs> see? see 280,000 people on my side. Click on my video and see what the like dislike ratio is because my dislike ratio, not disabled, totally abled. How do you know? 19,000 to 500. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, dominating. 500 <laughs> losers in there, but who cares? Fuck? Yeah, see, don't watch his bullshit video. Watch my video. And you'll be you've committed. already seen his video. We all know his <laughs> really glossing over take. You, you got over a quarter million people watching you disprove that Helen Keller was not like just that yeah, clip of like, it. That's not even why, a show. Why that, even attack Helen Keller? Like, what is like well, like, we do this reoccurring it thing made where me we laugh. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> you were like, uh, this unproblematic part of human history that seems to have a positive thing. I just gotta <laughs> prove it, to, gotta prove it to everyone. It's just a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> oh let me ask you this God. taylor let me ask yeah. you this taylor and be honest i swayed you a little bit with the holocaust right mm. i'm not i'm not dipping my toe into that pool that's a yes folks that's a <laughs> fucking yes that's not a yes all. but i might have to work a real job at some point in my life and so i'm not dipping my toe woody I swayed you a little bit with the Holocaust, right? Oh, not at all. Hey, Taylor. What do you have to lose? <laughs> what do I have it's, to lose? I want another poll. To lose I, want another poll. With me. I want another poll. Who did I sway with the Holocaust talk? Because I gave some legitimate facts and figures. I would advise have... not having a Holocaust deniability <laughs> poll on your Reddit. Do not. Taylor, do I poll. just fully In advise the... that you do a poll. This needs to be <laughs> I want to know there. who agrees with me that the Holocaust was overblown. The numbers were greatly exaggerated. Yes, I yes, I yes, Kyle, agree. this helps you. <laughs> Hold on. So since 1959, Tommy was also deaf and blind and learned to communicate like Helen Keller. Ronnie Merjaka uh, was also deaf and blind and What's learned Tommy's to communicate. Tommy's last name? I don't trust a one name. Tommy made up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could look it up. Tommy Fictitious. I don't care. Tommy uh, Fabricate. Yeah, Tommy Fabricate. Okay, okay, right, right. I, I got a little quick. Tommy is actually a fictitious character from the Who's uh, Pinball. Oh. <laughs> yes, oh, wait, wait, yes. wait. I'm winning this poll. I'm winning this poll. <laughs> I, I should have read more carefully. Uh, Haven Gurma is a deaf blind person that graduated from Harvard so, Law School, actually. Awful, in, 2019. Like in 2019. In 2019, Haven Gurma. Harvard Law graduate, deaf blind. Woody, is that her I name or how she it. says it? Heaven <laughs> Gabla. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, that's the last one. When did, no, but oh my no, God, again. can we get a deaf blind person as a guest? 
<laughs> How are they going to get on Discord? Anyways, but, but I they have... don't actually have to be deaf and blind. They just have to be real good at pretending. <laughs> I, I need to know. I want to know the only the only my only stipulation to b- believe Taylor or not believe Taylor relies on the fact that both of these people have to have been deaf and blind around the same age as Helen Keller was at 19 months and uh, learned some level of communication that would put them on par with Helen Keller, which I believe yeah. is like pseudo conversational Yeah, and I actually know like the kind of stuff you're talking about, Woody. That what Tucker just hit the nail on the head. It's about the age that it happens and the extent to which the blindness and deafness is total for Helen Keller. Total. If like apparently like if you're able to form words and you can understand language and stuff like so if you go blind and deaf at age 15, you have the the requisite to be more understanding. Helen Keller didn't have total deaf and blindness, and she just handled. No, that's what I was going to say. Who, for all you know, like maybe we didn't have the correct testing. Like if if he's like, how many fingers am I holding up? And Helen Keller can only see like dark. I think that right. lying bitch wasn't very disabled at all. <laughs> and she just said oh. she just pretended to be disabled to lower yeah. expectations. He's like, I don't want to talk to That's y'all. That's right, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a genius! <laughs> She's also a telepath. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, does, can you get her to talk when you're not holding a lighter under her toes? <laughs> 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 no, that's this is our training session. <laughs> do you need that, like do you need that rider's crop to hit her in the top of the hand? <laughs> it's like a circus. The tricks are pretty awesome <laughs> at the show, but the training behind the scenes is dreadful. Yeah. Horrific. It's just horrific. Dude, speaking of something that's kind of like an urban legend or a myth, I've got I was looking around for stuff because I was just thinking like I don't know, it's one of those stupid little Google things you do where you're like, I wonder what a myth is out there that I believe is a myth, but it actually isn't. And then like on a different tab, be like, I wonder what a myth is that I don't believe is actually <laughs> true. And I started trying to find something there. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna say a couple, and I want you to tell me okay. if this is a real, a real fact, a true fact, or propaganda. I'm psyched for this. All right. Sex before competing in sports makes you worse because That's a myth backwards it's a myth kyle you're pretty confident about that i'm that's a myth that's bullshit it raises well, your testosterone level i'm told is it? that's why ronda rousey fucks before every fight <laughs> you're correct woody it raises your <laughs> testosterone and it gets you hyped uh ovechkin says his part of his game uh, performance can't tell if he's joking because he's russian hard to read that cadence but he <laughs> says he fucks before and after every game ah uh. To, to his make poor sure teammates. Testosterone- <laughs> his po- <laughs> I, was, I was trying to. F- I wanted to make a joke. I couldn't form it. <laughs> oh, it looks like somebody didn't play too much. Like, that guy's <laughs> ass must be sore. No, that's not about, working. Uh, nah, Kyle how about nailed this it. one. Uh, Satan is the ruler of hell, according to Christianity. Is that true, or is that is that a myth, or is that is okay? That real? So I think. It's true, but using psychology, Don't you Google, Kyle? I think it's going uh, to be false. I was going to look up something completely different, but I was about to Google. It I had think... nothing to do with this, they, but you, you triggered something in my head about a different religion that believes that God is the true deceiver. Um, and I, I've been uh, uh, Graham Hancock turned me on to that. I want to go to that in a second. Um, but but Satanism, I, as far as I know, sa- no Satan uh, works for God. Um, <laughs> He did right. He was one. Of, he was one of the, Lucifer was one of the God's God's angels. He he was jealous that God was uh, you know loving man more than the angels, and he rebelled against God, and he was overthrown and sent down to hell, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know that he's the ruler of hell because of what I just said. He was thrown into hell, right? Although everything like pop culture wise and everything I've ever been taught says. Yeah, you know, the, the guy with the viper gated tail and the pitchfork down there, he's the one running the show. So yeah. I'm just going to say that the devil runs hell, though by its very nature, it seems like God runs hell. I'm going to say so, that the devil doesn't run hell because I'm just getting that vibe. <laughs> Ahmed, does the devil run hell? It's funny because in Islam, it's kind of similar to Christianity as far as uh, hell and heaven and the devil and all that shit. The first part of the Quran and the first part of the Bible are pretty much the same thing. They're all uh, Abrahamic religions. They are. They are similar. Yeah, they are Abrahamic uh, religions and ideologies. A lot of uh, them are similar. But uh, in Islam, what we have learned is that, uh, no, he doesn't run hell. And so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I guess I'll go with that. He doesn't. So you're correct, Ahmed. And I I guess all of you. Are correct. He does not run hell. He oh. was sent to hell 
And it's just always assumed that, I guess, because he was the first guy to show up in hell, that he kind of established a, a base, mm-hmm. I guess. And then as more people showed up, he just did, like, the pretend authority mm-hmm. figure where it's like, ah, I, I, you believe I'm in charge, so I am. Mm-hmm. And then you know, send people around. But, yeah, he's not, he's not actually in charge of hell. Uh, real quick, not to change the subject, have you guys seen The Invention of Lying? It's a movie uh, f- from uh, oh, Ricky with, Gervais. Uh, yeah, I saw that oh, oh, right when it came out, a long time ago. Yeah, that, that movie is hilarious. Basically, uh, the people, maybe I shouldn't spoil it, but uh, it, this movie it takes place in a, in a place where no one can lie. So everyone tells, tells the truth 100% mm-hmm. of the time. So this guy uh, uh, somehow imagines or starts lying, discovers lying. So he goes to the bank and he's short on money and he's like, uh, the, the cashier woman is like, uh, well, sir, our systems are down. How much money do you have on your bank account? And he's like, he wants to say 300, but he, has, uh, he needs $800. So he's like, wait, I can say 800. And he says $800. And then she just gives him $800. So a few uh, scenes later in the movie, <laughs> he basically uh, found every religion on earth. And he says, there's a man in the sky. And he does that. And he <laughs> says that. And if you do three wrong things, you go to a place that is not very, uh, very nice or pleasant <laughs> called hell. And if you don't do that, you go to a place where you get a mansion. And everyone gets a mansion. That, uh, that movie is hilarious. <laughs> I watched it a couple, it of, few, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Pretty, pretty funny. That uh, that I've religion I was thinking. Of. Oh, go okay, ahead. Go. I'll, I'll jump. The, uh, quickly though, the, the religion I was thinking <coughs> of, uh, Graham Hancock was 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 talking about this in one of his uh, whatever you call it when you stand in front of a bunch of people with a fucking PowerPoint and talk tell them stuff. It wasn't a TED talk. It was it was somewhere else at a university or something. Sure, but yeah. but he was t- he was talking about this religion um, that it believed that uh, the Christian God was not a god that he was actually a demon who had um, come to Earth to deceive humanity into believing that he was a god. That was his game. He likes to go places and, and make people or entities believe he's a god and then have That's them really worship meta. him. And, and, so, and so what they explain, they talk about the Garden of Eden. And in this uh, religion, they see the serpent as the good guy. He's coming into where humanity's imprisoned and saying, you've been fooled. You don't even know the difference between right and wrong. All you, you're just here to worship that guy. That's all he's doing. He's just sapping your your worship juice up, and that's all he cares about, right? Eat the apple, and you'll have knowledge, and you'll be freed from this evil, dece- deceptive demon. And so they did, and God throws them out. And remember what God did after that happened. He's like, ah, oh, Eve, now oh, not only you will be in pain the rest of your days, all women. And, and, and you'll be confused when you're thrown out of here and you'll have to suffer the serpents and the beasts of the land. He just went to cursing us left and right when we ate this apple yeah. of knowledge so we'd know the difference between right and wrong. Then look at, at like what he does. And I'm, I'm parroting what, what Graham says in his lecture. He burns us when we're bad. He forces us to worship him, praise him constantly. Are these the actions of a, a generous, kind, omnipotent, omniscient being? No, they're the actions of a fucking intergalactic demon Who's fucking taking up our worship juice? Satan's the good guy. That is that that Strong is point. that is pants on head retarded. And like the Christians is- burned <laughs> these people alive and persecuted them throughout the ages, and they went underground and they are no more. I feel like both sides of this viewpoint are pants on head retarded. But that's right. just saying that being like, uh, oh, dude, Star Trek, that's not real. The real Star Trek story. They were in a Ford Windstar driving across the country. They weren't even in the future. And it's just like, no, that's not. You're just taking a, a fantasy story and making it into a slightly different fantasy story. Being like, because clearly that guy Graham Hancock doesn't buy into any of it. And so he's just treating it like a fanfic thing where he's like, this could be real too, you know? Look Graham, at how, Hancock, Graham Hancock, Hancock believes that our um, our soul or our our, um, our being, like the part, he, he doesn't think it's 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 our brain. He thinks that our brain is like a television set that is receiving the signal that is our soul. That's that's what that's what this physical <laughs> part of us is, and that when we the just, body we just is passed gone, into a new field, <laughs> and when the body is gone, that that your soul or your intelligence <laughs> goes on living afterwards. That's and he's a scientist. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But like, I would believe like there are lots of scientists who are religious. 
but very few signs. I don't know. Like that's just he's not that's religious. So... He doesn't preach that religion. I just like was talking about. No, that no, I, I know. That's, that's I, I was saying there are scientists who are religious. So when they're like, "Oh, I'm a Christian and I'm a physicist," or "I'm you know whatever and I'm a scientist," you're like, "All right, yeah, I understand." Like, there's a cultural thing to that. But for a scientist who's really into science to be like, "I don't believe the brain's responsible for all this," it's like, "Yeah, well, look into, do three minutes of googling, and you'll be like, oh yeah, see, they used to think it was the heart, and then they very quickly found out it's the brain as soon as we had the capacity to analyze the brain." Well, what he's talking about is that believes that well, Earth we turn is our brain off, and turn it back old. on, and we're still here. That's even more ridiculous. We don't turn our brain off and turn it back on. Sometimes what do you mean? Do. Can, can you define like, has a near, like a near-death experience? Your brain stops. Your flatline, no electrical uh, impulses in your brain. Then they just turn you right back on and, oh, I'm here again. And it's me. It's still me. And I, I don't know what consciousness is. I don't think anybody does. And I, I don't think science has figured it out quite yet either. Um, if th That's kind of like the, the, the biggest question of them all, right? Is like, what is consciousness? Like, are we either a product of this like fleshy goo between our ears or are we something a little bit more important it's just, than that? It, it's interesting that a guy like him who seems to make fun of religion for taking a naturalistic event and imposing a super complex, unknowable being as the, the catalyst for it and then saying, oh, and the brain, that's not responsible for all of our thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actions. It's actually this infinitely complex and undefinable ethos in our body that is responsible for that. You know, it's like the same thing, that same paradigm of you're explaining natural cause, a natural system with an unexplainable, unknowable entity because it's confusing. You know, it's, it's just kind of the same structure. I don't know enough about the brain and how it works. I don't know that we've, we've definitely settled on that the brain is what creates our consciousness. I, I just don't know that. I don't know what, I don't think anybody does or, 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 or that are, I don't know that our consciousness it, it ends when we're turned off. your consciousness. Like the fact that when your brain shuts off, you it cease to It facilitates it, but does it create it? It, it facilitates you, it, but does it create uh, it? That's the question. Yes, it, it does create it because there is a, uh, there is a video I linked to us, like in our PKA chat a little, a couple days ago, uh, Prosco, it, it's some disorder where you're no longer able to control your body you oh, don't have, yeah. you have uh, look, without looking at it look. so basically this guy has sensations on his body where like if you like slapped his hand he'd be like oh i felt that but if you told him to close his eyes and then put his hand to his right like that he wouldn't be able to put it in the space that he wanted because as soon as his eyes are closed he no longer he can't feel what's, what's the, the, word the for locomotion is it proprioception or something proprioception that's exactly what it is yeah. And it's so he just doesn't feel the locomotion ability. And so it's just he has to look at everything he does to make sure that it's actually going. So it's all relayed back to the brain. The brain's the only thing that allows those that information to be perceived. So as soon but, as that but now you're talking about wait, motor but, mechanics and stuff. No, 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 but it's not just that. As soon as that area of the brain was was damaged, he he lost the ability to perceive information in that way and to respond to information that he that he would have been perceiving. And so it's like about his the, body through because of his brain. Yeah, because the, body the brain is, controls the body. I'm not talking about command and control. I'm not talking about what's required for one thing to exist. I'm talking about. I, I, I'm, I'm saying that that I'm saying that they could be both things could be true at the same time. I know the brain is what allows us, and when I say us, I mean my consciousness to control everything else. And if you fuck with my brain, then I just can't do that shit right. But what I'm saying is that what makes me me might not be all about the gray stuff between my ears. Things I like might just be love me. and hurt and I, uh, no, no, that's, that, no, that's, no, that's your brain. I'm talking about me. What makes me, me, the me that but is, that, that's me. all that, your brain. Yeah. That's the brain. Yeah. It's, but it's have all, you guys, have you guys it. heard about the do Italian doctor that is trying to put a, a, a head decapitate head from a person and put it on another body. Yeah. Have you, have you heard about yeah, that? He's getting 2020 or something. Yeah. Full yeah, body transplant. Yeah, he already like, has a full body. No, actually, it's a head transplant because he's going to transfer a head to another body. Yeah, but he I doesn't guess. become the, the life of the guy whose body yeah. is taken. He doesn't he, like come out of the surgery like, I'm yeah, Jeff yeah, now. Well, <laughs> no one knows. Around. No one knows. Well, we'll oh, see we what know happens. That. We, we talked about this crazy, on the show a while that ago works. in that the, there were some people who felt like, like <laughs> whatever makes me me, the thing Kyle was talking about, existed in the heart, which today sounds crazy, right? Today, everyone's like, oh, that's your brain. But... Mm -hmm. Not long before I was born, some people thought your soul was in your heart and yeah, yeah. it wasn't just a pump. So 
if someone actually does pull off a brain transplant, you know, we'll all look back on it and say we already knew, right? Oh, yeah, we already knew it was in the brain, but it'll be fun to observe it. Well, it's not, it's a head transplant. So, so just to be clear, because the audience is listening and maybe they're not, this man is living right now and his body is fucked. They have a new body over there. So they're going to chop his head off and they're going to put it on that new body. And he, being the head, is going to control that new body. The guy who used to own that new body, his head is somewhere else right now, okay? And it's rotting in the ground, and whatever made him him is either A, also rotting in the ground in his brain, or B, is being projected onto some other TV screen somewhere else. Both guys are still alive right now. (laughs) Both guys are alive, yes. You know what I'm saying, though? When they cut his fucking head off, he won't be, (laughs) because he'll be dead. Because they're not... (laughs) I agree with that. (laughs) One guy's head is getting a new body. The other guy's head is getting burned. You think they'll give him the old shit body so they can still fill the casket? (laughs) 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 But but, but, six guys just going to be like, oh, he he didn't weigh anything in the end. There'll be two bolts coming out the side. Yeah, but I mean, if if that works, it's really crazy. I, I, would they, I heard scientists talk about the possibility that he could his consciousness could be in some sort of weird limbo inside of his own brain, unable to touch or feel or sense anything, but only to be conscious in a void inside of his, inside of that body. And they talked about how torturously and in, 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 that would be to one's mind, your consciousness to just exist without any way to, uh, um, to express himself. Any- oh, I don't yeah, understand yeah. how we are remotely close to the head transplant. And, and, and here's we're, why. Honestly, we're not. I, so it, right, yeah, right here I, in my I arm, the people see, succeed. Yeah, where people, this is a scar in my yeah, arm. There's yeah. a, my ulnar nerve was damaged. There was a tumor in it. They pulled the tumor out and then I lost some big percentage of the nerve. And it's why this hand doesn't work that well. They can't fucking connect the nerve that's here to the nerve that's here. Like that's not a broken. thing. And it's not just broken, it was destroyed by the cancer. It, it wasn't cancer. It, it was a surgical thing. When they cut, I think it was a pack of blood or something, but when they cut the tumor out because it was getting bigger, um, they also cut the nerves that it was growing inside of. So they're just scalpel damage in there. And uh, yeah. over time, some of the nerves found each other and it, got, it went from like totally paralyzed to, I'll make up a number, like 30%. But... That's where it is. If they well, this guy has no damage, that, but they'll so be damaged when they cut his head off. Well, they're not going to just lop it off with an axe. They're going to mm. very carefully dissect it from his body, removing all these necessary plugins carefully, and, mm. and making sure that we don't fray any of the uh, wiring. And they're going to try to plug him back into this new guy's spinal cord. So I don't. Try- I'm outside my expertise, but my idea is they're like wiring harness a, back there. Yeah, uh, they're with a trillion wires in it. And that they can't reconnect nerves, and that's what I where I thought we were. Yeah, I think they can first time. It just depends on how they were separated or damaged. That they will face the biggest challenge, I think, is going to be because I read in an article that the operation will take thirty six hours or something. It's a long time to be dead. Thirty six hours. And how the hell are you going to keep a a head alive? Yeah, uh, and how are you, how are you going to keep life? It's going to be on a transfusion that. machine. It's really right? cool. Yes. So they did. The Soviets did this shit with a fucking German shepherd's head. Anybody ever Saw seen it. the video of the yeah. German oh, shepherd's wow. head? Oh wow! Watched it in the uh, neuroscience fucking class. Chopped this German shepherd's head off, and they fucking pump oxygenated blood in its in one side of its brain and out the other, like like using a circulatory system that's there. And they're just pumping oxygen, and and the dog's head is just there, like fuck, fuck. Wow. Yeah. Fuck! It's just it's just a head. <laughs> Like what, what's probably going to end up happening with this because it's the first time we're trying it is the guy who gets his head cut off will die during the surgery. Like I, I if I had to bet on it, I'd put like all my money on the guy dying in surgery and he never wakes up. And if he does somehow wake up, it'll only be like he won't be able to control anything. Like this is one of those like forge, like forge ahead surgeries, kind of like when Carson did the uh, the separating two Siamese twins at the brain. Like it, it's going to be like a, a breakthrough surgery where they learn a ton of shit, but this one's not going to pan out with like, heart it, surgery. There's just no way it, it went like that too. Like people like, Oh, they did a successful heart surgery. He lived three days. And then some guy broke a record and lived like 14 days. And then like there was an artificial heart that lasted for a year. And isn't that crazy. And now like they, they have it 
the other way. Yeah, ahead. pretty routine almost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't want to overstep because I don't know. It sounds like you might. But yeah, now they can put in new hearts and it turns out okay. Mm -hmm. It's really just the supply heart. of hearts that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that a pig was, heart. Yeah, that I was got a pig heart. <laughs> What do you tell him when they ask you about your pig heart? <laughs> I tell him it's because I'm sweet as bacon sugar. <laughs> what are so, we talking uh, guys, about? South Park. You, uh, South Park, yeah. Did you guys uh, see the video I put in the chat? This but is a we game didn't we finished play. Taylor's thing. Like he had a whole. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to go back to the, the urban legend thing. There's a couple yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. So, Iron Maidens. Do you know what an Iron Maiden is? Yes, I do. I the band? I think so. Yeah, Saddam Hussein's son had one, and he fucking used it on people. So an Iron Maiden, what it is, it's a uh, picture a big sarcophagus that like a mummy would be in, mm -hmm. except it opens, and it's full of spikes. And you would put someone in it, and it's made of iron, Iron Maiden, and oh, yeah, this, close it, yeah, yeah. and it would pierce them, usually in non-vital areas, and they'd just be forced to stand up, kind of pinned there. Oh. Uh, and it was a, a torture method. Like a really or, shitty magician. Like, mm -hmm. yes, like a very <laughs> shitty magician. And they had like an eye slit cut so they could see if you were still alive in there. Because eventually, of course, you'd bleed out if you're just punctured all day. So yeah. that was a uh, an ancient torture method. Uh, or was it? It was. It absolutely was. And because, like I just said, Saddam Hussein's son <coughs> had one, like a legitimate one. It's not like he went and made one. He's like, hey, give me one of those good ones the French used to use. And he fucking put people in it. I'm going to the, agree with Kyle because he seems to know what he's talking about. No, we've uh, heard about that before. Saddam Hussein, like, uh, son, you're talking about Qusay, right? Uh, I don't know. Qusay and Uday. Uday. Yeah. yeah, Qusay was one of the most brutal guys ever in the history of Iraq. Like, he invented torture methods. Yeah, I remember in the 80s, there was a story about uh, Iraqi football team losing a very important, uh, uh, important game. Yeah, and he uh, put the entire team in jail and he uh, cut off their uh, legs and uh, tortured the entire football team of Iraq in the 80s. Uh, he was pretty re pretty ridiculous. That's not a good way to practice for the next game. Ah, oh, they won <laughs> four World Cups in a row. No, at but, that. But, the but the next team will know that they, they if they lose, they need to defect. They know what, what they will Jesus. lose. Well, you guys are all wrong. <laughs> the Iron Maiden was never an ancient torture device. It was actually made at first in the 18th century for circuses, as like a sensationalist. Like this is what they used to do back in the old days. Throw you right in the Iron Maiden, close it up. Ah, aren't you happy you live here? Or like however they talk, like that's okay. what they did. It, and then it, it's in modern days, I guess that uh, the 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 Hussein boys were so inspired that they made their own. But it was not an actual torture method. Do you guys know what a paper town is? Ancient times. Paper town. Paper no. town. No. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. And, and somehow it, it seems similar to an Iron Maiden to me. So back in the day, maps were harder to make than they are now. And to stop people from just copying your map and, and saying, hey, I made a map too. It's just like Taylor's, you know, but I, I didn't copy, I swear. They would put fake towns in place. It was called a paper town. So, you know, <laughs> Taylorsville might not even be a real place. But if I copied it onto my map, I know I copied from Taylor. Like they'd get one wrong. And uh, but what happened is people would go there enough that like someone might put a store, someone might do a thing and paper towns can become real towns because of that. And uh, ah, it, it, an Iron that's... Maiden became a real torture device because of a fake thing. Yep. It, yeah. So because of those cool. circus folk, a lot of people got tortured in Iraq in the 21st century. I guess. They were going to get tortured anyway. Century. <laughs> they were. They just made it a little more creative. Yeah. Um, this one. Yeah, they find a way. Uh, so everybody knows about touching baby birds and how you're not supposed to touch them or their mom will... Will not take them. Disown back. the baby yeah. bird, right? Is that a is that a real thing that's, or is that is that bullshit. a urban legend? So that's I'm going to say that that's that's not true, based on the fact that we had a bird nest under our porch and the baby bird fell out and I put the baby bird back in and it was raised to maturity and flew away. I'm going to say it's not true because I think I've heard this one dispelled before. Yeah, chickens are birds, right? And they're the same category as you are describing, right? Because no, we they're had not chickens. Birds. Well, they, the chickens the are birds. Category, I think right? they're birds. They are birds. Come on. <laughs> but we had chickens, and uh, we always used to play with the uh, baby chicks, but uh, the, their parents wouldn't be angry or anything. So I don't think that's true. All right. Well, y'all got that one right. Uh, could Yay. any of you explain to me what a vomitorium was? Anyone? And it's an ancient oh. Roman word. It, uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. 
It's either like they were going to... Amatory. God, I know this. I think the, the, the myth is that people would eat, gorge themselves, vomit, and then yeah. eat more. And I, I, I went to a vomitorium when we went to... Um, shit, it was a... It, I, I think it was a town that got burnt down by like a volcano that wasn't Pompeii. It was like another one. And yes. Maybe I forget. Anyway. So, and, and, and in this case, they said it was the home of a wealthy person, like based on what it was. And it was just a little corner, like not plumbing or anything, but like kind of a hole, the whole floor was stone and this spot wasn't. And they would just kind of vomit in that spot and then get back to eating. So I, yeah, how close did I come? That's the, the, I immediately started thought that as well. I was I, I I knew that it was either one of two things because I know the Romans they, it, that that word is not the word for the fetish for liking to get vomited on. Although I think <laughs> that that like the uh, another phrase for that it is a Roman shower or something like that is what they call it when the one person pukes on you because I think the Romans were into that vomiting on each other is a sexualized thing. Um, but I'm gonna so go. So you with think the this one. Okay. Well, you are both wrong about what a vomitorium is. It actually has nothing to do with vomiting at all. <laughs> a vomitorium is an entrance to a coliseum or an amphitheater <laughs> of sorts because it looked like it was, quote, vomiting people back out onto the street after events ended. And so it was called the vomitorium. It was just the entrance way or the exit way from the Coliseum. So it has nothing to do with vomit. There you go. The more you know. Indeed. You know. Edit that in. Mm. The star swipe. <laughs> 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 with a little Bill who wants to be a law sitting there. Just, yeah, yes. just for no reason. Donald Trump needs yeah. to watch that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which, oh, how a bill becomes a law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be uh, funny if they like come into his office and he pauses that. <laughs> He's like, he signed a law. He did a real thing. Um, now ISPs can sell your personal data to advertisers. Huzzah! I really thought there one was a chance thing. that he wouldn't sign that. Oh, was... I've got a good one for Go everyone. On. Hmm. But for one person in particular, is going to know. <laughs> Martyrs <laughs> and 72 virgins. You that get is 72 not 72 virgins Garen fucking teed in the bank. No, no, it's not 72 virgins. That's a mistranslation. It's 72 raisins. <laughs> raisins? <laughs> yes. Google it. I Google have my own theory. Fucker. So the, the, um, the 19 terrorists True. take down the Twin Towers and the Pentagon and, and what, what, whatnot. True. And they go up there and there's like Patrick Henry with like a baseball bat ready to kick some ass. And George Washington. And they all just start beating on the terrorists. And they're like, what the fuck is going on here? And they said, no, it's 72 Virginians. Virginians? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure Ahmed actually knows the answer. Well, I, I do actually know the answer. The answer is that there's a verse in the Quran that was telling a story about people who defended their home. They did jihad, which is the literal definition of the word jihad is uh, uh, doing an action in defense of your belief or your home or your family or your land. That's jihad, not blowing up yourself. Well, that also could in some context and somewhat w someone would argue that that it also uh, is jihad. Uh, but there's a verse in, in the Quran that says uh, those people that did that got 72 virgins. So basically, yeah, the idea is true. You do get a 72 virgins uh, if you do jihad. But it's always taken out of context from that story. It always, uh, they think that it's applied to anyone that does it. But in the Quran, it doesn't say. It just says that that, that happened and God gave them 72 virgins. So, yeah, it uh, says on this, uh, on this very... I'm sure reputable list that it is uh, a matter of debate in Islam, nowhere in the Quran, but is reported in other texts. So, yes. you know what? That wasn't fair of them to put on here because they just said, I don't know. That, oh, they, this is CNN, the last one on the, the list. Yeah, and they were getting it has, desperate. It has yeah. been mentioned in, in the Quran, but not in the context that people believe it to be. So, hmm. it's kind of always taken out of context. Makes sense. I'm sorry, yeah. Kyle, what were you saying? Uh, I was just sent those. Three links from CNN. Oh, raisins or virgins. I, yeah. I remember hearing something about that, and I was like, there's no way that a bunch of people just have continued to misread raisins for this uh, long. I've they're heard it too. I don't pretend to know what's true, but I will say that 72 raisins 
isn't really that motivating to me. Um, if it's the there. year, if it's the year one, and I have seventy-two fucking raisins, you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> Where did you get them all? <laughs> I don't I think so. Could I smell your hand? <laughs> the hand you touched the raisins with? <laughs> you got 72 fucking raisins back then. And they're like, look, if you if you martyr yourself, your wife is getting all of this. <laughs> all of these raisins. That's a mid-afternoon snack. I, I just feel like snack. even your she one version regular? of me is worth more than 72 raisins. I, I hope I bring in a dead uh, raccoon every once in a while. You know, I want to like trade it in for a different meal. <laughs> you know, be like that. Raisins are great. Can I can I exchange those? Do you do exchanges here? Institutions <laughs> have it your way. You know, <laughs> was that the last one, Taylor? Or are there more? I'm I'm eating oh, raisins more. now. Nice. Well, this there. must be heaven. Oh, you have raisins. The I do have seventy two raisins. <laughs> um, do you? Ha- how long do you have to wait to file a missing persons report? Ah, uh, they. 72 hours. I, 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 yeah, I think there's. I always hear like 72 hours in the movies and stuff, but you can probably do it right away, right? I thought it was 24, yeah. but I'm going to guess immediately. Yes, it's immediately. Yeah. See, because like a lot of the problems sense. with these questions is that you're like, is, you know, but like if, if Jackie is just gone, Woody's like, Jackie didn't fucking just go anywhere. She's been taken. Like, we need to put this report in now. Like, it, it just wouldn't work. Like, yeah, that's, too many that's people that makes so much yeah. sense because like, yeah. It's one of those things that you don't think about at all when it's said in like a show or a movie where it's like, oh, I'm sorry, we can't carry that out. We're so busy with paperwork and cop stuff. <laughs> we got to wait, wait three days for you to report it. But like if someone like imagine yourself in that situation of telling a cop like my son's been taken. When, when was this? I don't know. This afternoon. Call me on Thursday. <laughs> you, you would be like, are you fucking kidding me? No, absolutely not. And so it's like the first time this question's really asked of you. You're like, oh. Duh, of course. Yeah, like the cop right. can't just say, no, fuck you. Come back in a couple days. Like, yeah, of course. I do believe that um, police may take it more seriously, like depending on the story, right? Like, hey, I came home from school. My wife wasn't there. Like, yeah, well, sometimes Tuesday, that happens, right? You know, like. I think if you say that, they're going to take you very seriously as a suspect. You're like, uh, my wife hasn't been here since Tuesday. Well, why don't you fucking say something sooner? Well, in the movies, they always say 72 hours and I, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I was worried, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the, of the good ones that I got. All the rest, I'm realizing, are like, I'll ask it, and I can only ask it in a way that is that gives away the answer. Because yeah. I'd have to be like, how many wise men were there? Mm. And then you guys would be like, well, you want me to say three, but that's clearly wrong, so <laughs> not three. I'd be like, oh, well, you're right again, you geniuses. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is totally different, but have you ever been like researching a conspiracy or something wild for a video and you're like after a few hours days whatever you're like oh this is getting a little too real and wild not this one let's find yes. a different one yes. what what yes. are some yes. examples of that if you can okay. um, so the the one that really like did me in was I went really down all the Epstein stuff when that happened yes yeah um and this this was before like I did the YouTube stuff I was just like, is it is it really that bad? And then I, I remember like getting legitimately depressed. I mm-hmm. got so into that. I got so into looking where money was going. I got so into who owned these places, who like went where. I just got depressed because I'm like, man, it really is everyone, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And that, that, it was like, like people joke about like, oh, the black pill. I remember being like, wow, everyone is evil everywhere. That is so <laughs> sad. Um, uh, I remember like having to step away from that. Mm-hmm. And just kind of take a moment to uh, like reevaluate myself. Yeah. Um, but like, I, I've come to peace with it now. Of like, you know, I'm my worth isn't reliant on those who have greater faculty or power above me or whatever. But man, yeah. I tell you what, that was sad. Um, that that would be the big one. Mm-hmm. There's been some other minor ones that I've like sort of like dabbled in i'm like oh, i don't want to know how much more of this i want to find out about one mm-hmm. one of them was the benghazi stuff i got really into that more recently like in the past year and i remember researching that and being like this is depressing <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it's not like i don't come up with the stuff like aha everyone who's in charge of us is evil people whatever and be like i figured it out it's just like well 
dang it. You're just telling it like it was. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. like, ah, man, uh, whatever. You're just I like, I'll I'll go, didn't know there were this many the pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that, I guess I'm going to go walk in the woods now. So. That is funny, the like, how the Epstein thing. Get water real quick. I'll be right like back. Like, when it, when it first came out, people were like, right. So there's just a bunch of pedophiles in positions of power all over the world. <laughs> and then you look into it, and it's like, wow, there are pedophiles in positions of power all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I heard I heard that that was used to control each other. It was like that it was oh um and I mean I mean you would probably have heard this at some point or something but it was used as a means to control each other like you mm-hmm. are in the circle of trust because we have all committed this heinous disgusting act and so it is yeah. used as a means of controlling each other and and committing to the to the 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 team because you're all disgusting people. Yeah. Yeah, mutual blackmail. We had a similar uh, it's like if, if we go down, you're coming with us. So you better do what we say. <laughs> I remember um, where I'm originally. I live in Tennessee now, but I'm originally from like Eastern Kentucky, like in the coal country of it. And uh, there's a lot of gangs around, the, like before my time mainly, but like during my dad's time and all that. Uh, the gangs or the Mount Mafia, as they were called, were real popular. Whenever they were breaking up picket lines and there were shootouts everywhere. And uh, part of the deal was whenever there were new initiates, they did a lot of stuff like blew up bridges, blew up coal trucks, stuff like that. Um, If they were to ever like shoot something or blow it up, they would find some way for everyone's hand to be on it. Mm -hmm. Like if you show up, you are going to shoot the vehicle or you're going to uh, have some part in place in it because the first time you have to be like mutual blackmail and that just scales up. So like for a bunch of guys in the mount, it's shooting up a coal truck. For like you know Hillary Clinton, it's eating a baby. It just it's yeah. just natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. It, it's the the world is like like I, I I'm not nearly as into weird it as timeline, you, but like it gets depressing when you like look into it, some it stuff where yeah. it's like oh man, people are genuinely very cruel to one another, and that makes me sad. <laughs> I remember I used to be like like in high school I was. Uh, uh, I think I got like most likely to be present some superlative and I was on a bunch of debate teams and stuff like that. Mm. And I was like really into politics. And then that happened. And I just like, I was like, I'd never want to look at someone in a suit ever again. <laughs> like it, just, it, it, re- it really did poison me to a point of bitterness for a while. Uh, like I said, I'm better now, but yeah, you, you asked like, what was the one that hit too deep? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one really hit too deep. Yeah. It makes sense. That's a, that's a good answer. I was expecting something like that, like where you just, get it's like uh you you stare too long into the abyss and it begins to stare back into you you spend Mm -hmm. all this time obsessing about and and reading about something that is horrific and then you start to be like man little little bits of my soul are like flaking off as i'm reading this like i'm becoming actively more cynical by there's also this this, like not just with that specifically but with a lot of like grander conspiracy like stuff like the mlk assassination or jfk or whatever there's this sense of um hopelessness or like just inability inability of action Mm -hmm. like oh what am i gonna do catch these guys or no matter how many people i tell it's not gonna get better right yeah and that leads to a sort of i guess it can lead to nihilism if someone sits in it for too long um Mm. But it, like I said, it's just got to be something that you kind of recognize. It it doesn't define you just because it's happening and you can't do anything about it. Uh, you're not your inactions. Uh, but yeah, I had I, literally I had an entire soul searching thing over the Epstein stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you still like following any of the Galen stuff uh, as that was going on? Yeah, um, I've got my own theories about all that. I don't. It, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like a train wreck but the train wreck's halfway done like you mm-hmm. know like the front the front car hit and everything crashed and it's not like well i hope the back of the train will stop doing that no it's just gonna keep mm-hmm. <laughs> piling up over and over um I, I i kept up with it but not as much as i did originally because like i said you can't or at least i can't super invest my time like man i hope justice is served because i i know the answer and it's just going to make me sad again <laughs> yeah it's not going to be served and every <laughs> like, it's funny like at first like so many people were like oh this isn't happening there's they're not there's no pedophile island and then now like some of those same people are like we got them 
the one, the two people, <laughs> the two people on earth who were doing this, we got them. Don't worry, guys. This was a one-off. It's never going to happen again. It's certainly not happening with other individuals as we speak right now. We got them, everyone. Mission accomplished. It's like, you know, it's like I don't know. Yeah, it's literally like like we Bush did, on that on it, that guys. fucking destroyer. There are two we got <laughs> well, there were that thing we said was a conspiracy lie for years was true. Thankfully, the only two individuals globally involved in this have been caught. One of them killing himself when a camera misfired and a bunch of people who didn't work there found their way into his fucking cell. What if that's Man. the way they said he died? That his camera, the camera that was recording him exploded and killed him. <laughs> That'd be a little bit know, more obvious. More. He was electrocuted <laughs> yeah. by the camera. Oh, do we have that on film? Well, think about that one. Why are you asking tough questions? All right. The conspiracy would be a little terrible. more obvious. He, 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 he was a terrible camera person at, at hanging himself, hanging himself and bruising and breaking that many ribs. Like, <laughs> I mean, what? He never done it before. Well, the guy who ended up doing it, at least according to McAfee, before he also pseudoed himself. Okay. Um, okay. Like, that guy's a, that guy was a. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got an okay from Kyle. Go ahead. What was that? Well, I mean. All right, Mac, if he was a, was a he, he was on the show on our show. No, 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 no. He's a goop. I, I didn't know that he was on the show. That's interesting. Um, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm was. not. I'm not saying that he uh, was murdered. I do think that he did commit suicide. He I did. wasn't yeah, yeah, being yeah. sarcastic. I wasn't being sarcastic yeah. on that one. I literally meant he did see out of himself. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about the guy that McAfee tweeted and was like, this is the guy in the jail, which he was right. The dude who was a former cop in New York was the one. Who was you remember how uh Epstein was like almost strangled a week before he died? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that guy did get like moved and separated and all that. But then they kept him in the same jail and like on the same cell block or whatever. And he was a couple cells down whenever the cameras went out. Mm-hmm. And like the room that Epstein died in was previously that guy's room. So it's like, oh well, of course it's gonna have DNA and fingerprints and you know, blood and whatever all over the place. Um yeah, just you got, I, I went down the rabbit hole and stuff like that. It really Jesus, it hurt yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's interesting. Kyle, are you okay? You look. It's... <laughs> Do you have anything to weigh in on it, Filthy? No, no, no idea. No, no knowledge of any of the facts of that. So that just... that didn't stop me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What'd you do, Taylor? Well, mine has something to do with uh, gas as well except it's in the modern day. So mine is about uh, Bashar al-Assad, who is the leader of Syria, uh, the elected leader of Syria. And the reason that it jumped out to me is we all know how divisive the media is and how much like Fox and MSNBC hate each other. Like it's rare that a story will break and that everyone will be on the same page without fail. Every single time Uh, Syria comes up, people on the left, people on the, or rather news sources on the left, news sources on the right, they all are like hinting at the idea that we need to get more involved in Syria. We need to have more troops over there. It's not so much a yes versus no, it's a to what extent, you know, Mm -hmm. conversation of do we need this many or this many? Who knows? But we definitely need a lot of people over there. And the reason it seems odd is you have to look at the timing and know the context of what's going on over there. So basically in Syria, there's a civil war going on between Assad's forces, the the forces of Syria, and the quote unquote moderate rebels that the US and Israel and Western powers uh, pump up with those brand new Toyotas and guns and you know, pallets of money to allow them the ability to fight back semi-effectively against uh, Assad's you know, pro-army forces. And so this has been going on for a while. And these uh, quote unquote moderate rebels, which are not moderate at all, we call them moderate rebels because it sounds more palatable in the media. These are Wahhabi uh, Muslims, and those are the actual, like Wahhabi Muslims are the ones that regular Muslims are like, oh, do, 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 do. no, no, thank you. Like they're the extremist, you know, cut your fingers off, shoot you in a line, like, like basically just an angry dog that can be wielded by a stronger power and turned against. They're the Mormons. The, the Mormons, sure. And every time, the civil, so the civil war now and for years has been going back and forth, but it's always been on the sod side for the most part. He's winning against these moderate rebels. And every time the war starts to turn down, uh, it happened under Obama, happened under Trump. Uh, they're like, oh, there's a gas attack. There's a gas attack. And they go, well, that, the line has been crossed. We got to uh, send more troops there. We got to lay the hammer down. And my 
uh, contention is that the reason that these gas attacks happen at these specific times is because they know that the moderate rebels are losing to Assad. They want to destroy Assad and have a power replacement there. And so they need any excuse at all to get the U.S. or Israeli or any real military's air force, because al-Qaeda, ISIS, they don't have air forces. They're going to get trounced by real air forces. And so the U.S., these Western powers, want to be able to go in, do some real fucking damage to Assad's army, and then back off and let uh, these moderate rebels go in and cr create havoc and and destroy this place. And what people don't know is, you know, Assad is is popular with his people, and he's uh, even among uh, you know they paint him as this like crazy madman, which Woody and I uh, we, on the show we talked about it before. You know, oh, this previously rational actor who did things in their self interest. Uh, what well, they're doing this now? He's gassing his own people when he's winning the civil war. Well, it's just madman. Don't look any further into it, madman. Don't think about it. We got to do this. Uh, but every time the tide starts to turn, a, a gas attack or something like that happens in a totally non-strategic way, and they use that as rationale to funnel more money, more arms, more trucks to these moderate rebels to fight against Assad. Uh, in addition to that, you have to think about the context of the war and what Assad would have to gain from these gas attacks. So Assad is winning. What does a guy who's winning, who is popular with his people, and this most recent gas attack was during an EU inspection. <laughs> the EU was there to confirm that he didn't have any more gas. And as they were there, they go, gas attack, gas attack. You know, 70 uh, people died over here. Was it a strategic area that he needed to hold? Was it something that he there was any incentive whatsoever to do? Was Assad going, man, this civil war is going so well. I'm going to take on the U.S. Yeah, I'm going to take on the U.S. and Israel, you know, two of the most powerful militaries in the world. I'm going to take them on. Like, no, there's no incentive for him to do that at all. Uh, even the way that they cover it, you can tell that it's partially BS. You have the white helmets that you hear about, which are really just the PR, you know, front-facing arm of al-Qaeda. They're not the good guys. Uh, those white helmets, there are footage of them, you know, cleaning up the wreckage of this gas attack. And you see all these bodies laying out that were apparently just you know, uh, in the process of being killed by gas. You know, some people are dead, some people are still twitching, and they're walking around in their white helmets with, like, T-shirts and shorts on, touching these people, like, moving them, picking them up. You know what you don't do when there's a gas attack? Is you don't gallivant in there with your shorts on and start touching things. You don't do that. You're going to die. Like, it, it, gas isn't like movies where it's like, oh, is that last wisp of smoke out of the air? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm fine. No, <laughs> that's lingering. That's there. You walk into that area way later, you're going to be in some serious shit. And so these, these, I think it's false flag of Western powers, namely the U.S. and Israel, who think that it is greatly advantageous to them to destabilize the Middle East and make themselves a stronger presence. And over and over and over and over, you see that, it just doesn't add up. It does not make any sense at all for Assad to be doing what he does over there. He he is not this, uh, and even even then, like, and it's not even pumping up Assad like he's some great dude, but he's way better than those moderate rebels who the people who live in Syria are fucking terrified of. The people in those, in those cities are, are normal. They're not Wahhabi Muslims. Those Wahhabi Muslims hate those Muslims just as much as they want to kill the Christians. You know, Assad protects the minorities in these cities for the most part. He uses his army to make sure that they can't go in and start slaughtering the, the minority Christians or the, the uh, normal Muslims. So that one really jumped out to me. And the more I read about it, unlike Kyle, I actually do think this makes a lot of sense. And I, I looked at like a lot of different news sites and I started to notice the pattern of no critical analysis. It's a foregone conclusion that it is Assad. A gas attack, it's Assad. How do you know? Because there's footage right here of uh, ISIS soldiers with gas cans that have Turkish lettering on it that they somehow came across. Like, it's not, it's clearly fucking these moderate rebels realizing, oh man, we're losing. And if we give uh, that quote red line excuse to the Western powers of US and Israel, then we're going to get more supplies. We're going to have a much better shot at winning this thing. And so it, it just does not add up one bit the way that the media covers it and the rationale of, of Assad to do these, these atrocities. It's also interesting that Iran is, of course, bordered with Russia one more, and, and Assad is allied with Putin. So it just gives us even more reason to knock him out and put our own puppet in, eh? Yeah, it, it, well, from, from that point of view, yes. Yeah, I, I buy that into point. that. 
I, I, so, so I wouldn't think that the U.S. would would have dirty hands in in that, but I do. I could definitely see us being complicit in it, allowing that, it to happen, we, or we even fuel the moderate rebels. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's known. Oh no, we do. Yes, of course. I, I've seen this uh, this graph that shows all of the groups that are fighting in Syria and how each of them are allied amongst one another, and it's a literal spider web diagram where where there are curved lines connecting all of the groups. And this group is opposed to this group, and this group is mm -hmm. allied with that group, and like it, it's absurd. It's uh, so complicated; it's almost impossible. Because the Saudis are there as well. The Saudis are the, the the Saudis have people there. There there are mercenaries from all around the fucking globe there rep that are representing a, yeah. a dozen different countries and 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 groups of countries. Right? It's it's a very and, complicated and you have thing. To remember, these are the same people who told us there were WMDs in Iraq confirmed. These are the same people who told you, oh, yeah, anthrax, that's all coming from Iraq. That, that's where it's coming from. They've got like factories and shit there. So it's not like there's not a precedent to, to lay this on. You know, it's there is a pattern of lying to the people, lying and implying and seizing that foregone conclusion thing. Because if every mainstream media outlet is agreeing that it's Assad, most people are going to go, eh, must be. They're not going to look into it and see, wait, what? He's winning this war handily and he gasses his own people, but he's still popular with them for the most part. Like it, it doesn't add up. Like in this most recent one, it happened so soon after Trump had his like, you know, speech or whatever, where he's like, we're going to get out of Syria as soon as we can. We're getting out of there. And then lo and behold, you know, a little, a little gas attack that doesn't make any tactical sense happens to try and, you know, make sure that that's not a possibility. It just, it does not add up. It doesn't. Yeah, I'll co-sign with that. There it is. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> I won! Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't CNN, Fox, MSNBC. It wasn't one of them that forced the hand of people. But it's so powers. easy to discredit. Like, fucking, what, they're going to arrest the Wayfair president now? Because that story came out. It's like... What's you could discredit story? these things. I hear Dude, Wayfair, Wayfair, but I'm not up to date on it. That shit is the so Wayfair weird. Hilarious. I, I was looking it's at it. It's so like, weird. Yeah, you, you take it, Ant. It's, uh, you know, Wayfair, you, you buy and sell. You buy things. It's, uh, is online, it like Amway, uh, kind of? Like it... No, it's kind of like, uh, what would you call it? Like just an online place where you can buy shit. Just to uh, Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Harbor something Freight. like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there are th some items there that were just ridiculously overpriced for what they were. You buy these industrial shelves, uh, and it was fifty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars, and and one left. And the name of the item was the same as a missing child. Uh, yeah, you would look these things up and go, <laughs> oh, it's an Emily, Emily, whatever uh, uh, shelves. And then you yeah. look up Emily, whatever, and, and it's like, oh, this girl's been missing for a while. Oh, you missed so the best it, part. It was, yeah. Like the shelf, the the, pro, the the items were the same. Like like they got like thirty of the same shelves. They've all got different names though, and they're different prices. Yeah, yep. different prices. Same shelves, different names, different price, but all ridiculously jacked up. Emily prices. must have been a fucking smoke show is all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, no, you're, yeah. You're right. uh, it, it, would like, it would say like uh, Emily shelves, $17,000. Samantha shelves, $14,000. Yeah. And I'm Aaron like, you can't even buy it. Like, like, that's less than what a new Mustang costs. Like, like let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Where could I get this? Yeah. But uh, that I was mean, And then... You Here's have to the raise these part. kids for six years before you can sell them. <laughs> Here's the weirdest part of the whole thing is the fact that the media <laughs> won't touch it. And I don't even mean the media going, wow, there's child. They're being sold on Wayfair. Just go like, hey, this has been uh, making the rounds, uh, the Wayfair thing. Send a journalist out. Let's investigate it. See what it's all about. And then go on and say, hey, we checked this out. It turns out to be a a hoax, or 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 they go, yeah. oh my God, there's ch children being sold. But they don't even touch this shit. Pizzagate was the same thing. Pizza, I want pizza. We love pizza. I have pizza on my chest. A fucking pizza's fucking at my house tonight. But it was so <laughs> weird, these things. But I mean, no it, one it, looked into it. Even it to might say, be that hey, it's, it's, it's fake. It might be that you can't sell ads on your expose into child 
slavery porn rings. Like e- even making fun of the Wayfair one. I don't know if I don't know if like C uh CBS could run jag ads right after their <laughs> expose on. So you we know, looked into this point. goofy child rape thing. Good point, but it doesn't mean it's not true. It doesn't mean it is true. I get that. But it doesn't mean yeah. it's not true just because they won't fucking cover it because of, you know, a sponsor not wanting that kind of material on. But you would think yeah. a, a, a real journalist, a Woodward and Bernstein kind of motherfucker, would want to go out and go, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to look deep and see what the fuck this is about because it's just too odd of a thing. And I'll come back and, and sit down and go, here's our story on the way for a thing. It's all bullshit. Uh, we looked into it and a hacker did this or that. But but to just leave it and go, we're not even going to look at it is a weird fucking thing. I, I agree with you. I'm, it is weird. Yeah. I'm looking at it. People, like, I think it's getting debunked. Like, I don't know. This one thing I found on WUSA. It's getting debunked by Wayfair. I love that. No. When they go, well, that's been debunked by who? Joe Biden. So, this, oh, well, it was about- so what they say is like some things are impossible to debunk, right? Like, like, like it's just impossible to see that this existed or didn't exist. Yeah. But other stuff is verifiably debunked. Like they're like, hey, this right. pillow was $10,000 and his name was Samantha. So it's this girl. Well, it turns out that girl was found like six years ago. So... Oh, yeah, they're not yeah. selling so, it. And then there's case after case after case. Like, you know, this one, I forget what the name of it was, but some other like little girl's name. And they're like, that girl was actually only missing for one month. You know, they, she was found right away. Only a month. Well, oh, she's sorry, still we pers- put the ad in. She got away. <laughs> 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 so that was like, but it was like a while ago. Like, like you know, they, they act like they're these kids are missing but is not there and but why are they even named after these and why kids? is it why is there a ten thousand dollar pillow like what is the explanation yeah, ten, that? The, like all of it that's what i mean just at least look into it and say there's something fucking weird here yeah this is the yeah. kind of shit and, and, that, and like um, can i just do a little okay. longer so yeah. wayfair i guess debunk some of it i know i know but they call out the wayfair didn't address the seemingly strange high price points and I'd like them yeah. to. I'd like them to explain why they have ten thousand dollar sure. pillows. Uh, then, yeah, that's a little ridiculous. I looked up, you know, I look at some expensive stuff occasionally. I was looking at what Jorge Masvidal's fucking robe costs. It's like six hundred dollars. It's not ten thousand fucking dollars. Like, I was like, trying to buy one of Mannix's jackets from the Mannix uh, TV show back in the seventies. Uh, Twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm oh, in. yeah. I've done the same thing. I uh, there's a I can't remember the name of the website where you can buy those movie props. But I yeah. really wanted uh, from the first Alien movie. I wanted one of those Nostromo jackets that they wore. Oh, yeah, Dude, <laughs> like awesome. It was a little yeah. expensive. I didn't buy it. And uh, but but still, like like nobody's selling twelve thousand dollar pillows. I don't care. There's no. no brand in the world that does that. No. Like, there's yes, pretty- there is. It's, they're it's made right, right here in my home state of Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, it's I, a, they're machine worshipable and dryable. I live in the Baja. <laughs> you know that I was a Navy uh, SEAL. I you were a Navy you. SEAL. A I fighter. About you. I was a, a fighter. governor. I, I was a governor. And damn it, I can't fucking compete with Anthony's. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't they let me on to Plum Island? <laughs> <laughs> you even did your one. face a little bit like Dude, it. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, he's yeah, that, that little mannerism. I love that one. I'm just a governor looking for answers. <laughs> <laughs> like Nixon's buff nephew or something. That guy's such a goofball. Oh yeah. Well. <laughs> Dude, but cr- really, for the it's for the Wayfair shit. thing, I think it's a uh, it's like Amazon uses high prices instead of making things go out of stock, so they don't lose like for a number of catalog reasons, they don't lose the URL. Like if it Google knocks out of the index or stuff like that, usually it's an algorithm gone wrong. If it has oh, one item left and a ten thousand dollar pillow, See, that that's my, I mean sense. that's what I've seen. Yeah, See, easy it, it, easy it, for it them to explain too. That's it, never happened on Amazon once. It and, has. No, yeah, <laughs> really? it's not, that's on Amazon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does happen on Amazon because the ASN gets compromised and they have to maintain their spot with, with the algorithm of Amazon. But it does not explain why they haven't addressed the prices and they haven't addressed the <laughs> fact that these names are on there. 
Yeah, he's yeah. wired they, put the names. Why in. is there a Samantha cabinet? Why is there an Emily cabinet? Where is why is there Cass- <sighs> Cassandra? Cabinet? Frankly, it seems yeah. like some here's shit you would handle on the dark web anyway, not on like an open website where anybody can go to it. Hiding in plain you, sight, you my you, friend. You also, think Samantha's- the reason is because Breaking Bad. Everybody wants more Breaking Bad, so now they want to find it on their own. Like that whole Los Pollos Hermanos and Madrigal and a giant global corporation doing illicit <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. Like now they're like, oh, well, Breaking Bad did it, so I think Wayfair's. I'm pretty sure they're doing it too. Everybody's doing it. McDonald's it. is selling crack in their Happy Meals. I know it. If you burn the box and then you can free base the ashes of a Happy Meal toy and oh, get high true? on it, I know it. That's true. I, 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 think, I, think as, I think as long as people are distracted by shit that is absolute bullshit, they won't report it as bullshit. So people just keep going at it. it. It gets that many people out of the way of the real shit that's going on. So you can even make yeah. the conspiracy the conspiracy that, that you know, they don't want people poking around the real shit. So let them bite on this Wayfair thing for a while. Fuck it. It might keep them out of the COVID shit. So who the fuck knows? I definitely yeah. think you're right there in that a lot of the conspiracy community, from what I've found out from, from just doing independent looking into it plus what we do here where we joke around about them real conspiracies fucking exist like if you if you don't think that groups of powerful people conspire together in order to achieve a given goal you're a fucking retard and there's no saving you like obviously they do we we see that all the time with that's why they had to fix price fixing with with companies because of shit like that because they conspire and so obviously this shit happens it's just a matter of which one's are actually slipping through the goalie and that are real, and which ones are the nonsense that we're supposed to latch on to? So you think and, there's and, intentional yeah. red herrings? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It seems like yeah. something. So Why wouldn't throw you do that? Out there in order to discredit any kind of conspiracy, because you even know Woody, Kyle, Dick, Ant, like you all know, when something is labeled a conspiracy theory, you have an inherent bit of distrust, right? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah for sure. That's yeah, yeah. Like, ah, people, come on. Yeah, that's what powerful people would prefer, right? To to muddy the waters with a bunch of nonsense so that you can't actually discern what's actually happening. Like th- th- that's. Yeah. yeah that I mean, that was the, whole, sure. that was the whole Genesis of, of, of us doing the uh, like conspiracy theories on here. It was like finding yeah. some that we legitimately think have some truth to them while at the same time being kind of silly. All right. Have- I'm excited for Woody's Woody has a PowerPoint for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, this is fuck. It's fucking hilarious to me that you did this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> my, I kind of cheated because mine's not so much a conspiracy theory as much as a simple observative, observable fact. Um, it's a piece of cake to prove. So United Flight 80, 93, That's the plane that was shot down in Pennsylvania on nine eleven. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through that and explain how I know that it was shot down. First, we're gonna go through the timeline. What's important to note on slide two here is the times. The World Trade Center went down an hour and 15 minutes before this flight did. There was lots of actionable time. The second one went down an hour or half an hour before this plane was shot down. There were 30 minutes, 31 minutes before this thing was known to be a problem plane and the time that it was finally shot down. On slide three, George Bush in his memoirs included that he gave the order to shoot down this plane. He actually thought that, well... In his book, did he really? I've he, never heard this. Yeah, George, and it's in his memoirs. He says, "I gave the order to shoot down this plane, and I was under the impression for quite some time that it was us who shot down this plane." Which, to me, is the cover for changing his story, right? You know, like ah, it turns out it just crashed on its own. Bullshit. Next slide. The F-16s were there, as I mentioned. <laughs> 31 minutes had passed. Well, the F-16s were only 10 minutes away from this flight. At supersonic speeds, it was less than 10 minutes. There was enough time to go there, to try radio contact, to give it a go. There were 21 minutes after the planes arrived to deal with this, to make a decision on whether they shoot it or not. Cleveland air traffic controllers were on the record saying that the F-16s and Flight 93 were there together in the same spot. And then they became forbidden to talk about what was on their radar screens. That's it. They just don't talk about that anymore. It's done. And there are eyewitnesses that see the F-16s uh, right by Flight 93. Next slide. The engines on Flight 93 landed over 2,000 feet from the crash site of the rest of the plane. 
That's half a mile. Now, when planes come drilling into the ground, the debris tends to be very localized. It's in one spot. The engines don't go another half a mile away if they hit the ground first. And where do mm -hmm. you see this engine record? Next slide, wreckage. There is a giant hole that this engine created as it came pummeling into the earth. Next slide. Here's a close-up of the engine buried into the dirt. Like, what is that? Four feet deep? Look at so this. So it clearly stuff. fell from a distance. It's it, it, The entire <laughs> engine is underground. It, it, it like burrowed a hole. This is not a motor that slid across the ground half a mile and then somehow dug a half foot, a four foot deep hole. That's not yeah. how this works. Next slide. They found mail. So Flight 93, like a lot of flights, had U.S. postage on it. They found this mail 10 miles from the flat, from the uh, crash site, just scattered throughout the woods everywhere. The official explanation for this mail is that the wind blew it. The wind was going eight miles an hour that day, which means that these letters would have had to have been airborne for over an hour across the ground through the woods. What kind of horseshit is that, right? That, that, that's not what mail does. If you dropped a letter in your front yard with eight mile an hour wind, it wouldn't stay airborne for the next hour and 15 minutes and find itself 10 miles away. It would drop at your feet unless there is a hole blown in the plane from 5,000, 8,000 feet in the sky. And then the mm -hmm. mail scattered across a 10 mile crash site because that's what letters would do. Last slide. In summary, the order to shoot this plane down was given by W. The F-16s were in the area with more than enough time to get it done. And the crash site debris is consistent with an air to air missile strike. The only other possibility is that the plane broke up in the air due to the pilot, the 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 um, the passengers attempting to take control, grabbing controls, and then making it do some sort of maneuver. Because the plane definitely has to break up in the air yeah. to accomplish all of these things. So you think the passengers flew the plane in such a way that the engine flew off? Um, I don't know much about planes, but like, <laughs> but, but it. It sounds like the plane broke up in the air yeah, due it to did. something. Mm -hmm. It definitely did. I, uh, I choose to believe Woody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard to go with any other conclusion on this. You know, the, the crash site is consistent with an air-to-air -air missile strike. Did they know if they the Flight 93 passengers ever made it into the cockpit or did anything like that? Or that's just totally unknown now. Because yeah, I know they had the some, they recovered some calls. Well, not in the film. Yeah, there was more stuff I didn't include in here. Uh, the passengers did make a run, but they don't know that the passengers actually got in the cockpit. They also have a guy who was on the phone in the bathroom when the missile struck the plane. And he's describing the bang he heard. And... You know, they just they don't really lay that out there. They're just... Wait, what, what was that? The, so there the was guy... a guy hiding in a bathroom because terrorists had taken over the plane. And while he's there talking to somebody on the phone, the missile strikes the plane and you can hear the bang. And he's like, I don't know what that was. And then it goes down. Yeah. Do you think there's a possibility that the terrorists had a bomb with them? Which it does seem kind of redundant because they were using the plane as the bomb. Yeah. But... But why would? OK, so maybe the maybe when the passengers maybe the passengers were imminently taking control of the plane it was it was happening and then they set off an explosive device that could also be an explanation i suppose yeah, yeah that, that although I, I it just what is it occam's razor where you, the the most reasonable solution is the, the simplest one that, yeah, yes i don't see why terrorists would bring a bomb when they're trying to use the plane as a missile Last resort potentially, but I agree with you. Your, is, your explanation is the is the most likely. To and me. and that yeah. uh, that alternative explanation is much trickier to slip past TSA than just some box cutters. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I I think that I, I think that it was shot down. I, I agree with you. I've always uh, thought that honestly, but based solely on the the, the debris field, it was mm -hmm. so scattered. Um. And and you know I. You don't have to be an expert to like understand that if a plane hits the ground, then it's all right there where it hits the ground, not the spread engine doesn't out. burrow itself in the ground a half mile from the site unless that yeah. engine came apart in the air. Yeah, yeah, it has to break up midair, and and I don't recall what kind of planes that they were, but have you ever seen the footage of that pilot flying? I think it was a seven forty seven, and he does a fucking um, what do you call it? like like a a bar not a barrel roll. He goes like he does like a a, a loop de loop like uh -huh. like yeah I forget what that's it. called but but like now that I, I I picture that I'm like 
No, it doesn't matter what the fucking they did up there. You can't make that plane break. You They're, can't fly it bad enough to break it. Yeah, don't take this right too hard. We might just come apart. <laughs> it doesn't, like, it's not, I don't think that uh, that's like maybe how like Ryanair works, but not <laughs> you know not United ninety three. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting. I I can't believe I'd never looked into Flight ninety three at all. I've never even seen the film. It would be funny in the film if somebody edited it in like a fighter jet, like in the corner that nobody <laughs> saw, and that just like then sunk back. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the stuff about like air traffic, air traffic control not being allowed to talk about what they saw on their radar. What's that about? That, that always inches me a bit towards the conspiratorial side is when people are instructed that they can't talk about it. You know, where it's like, hey, you can't talk about uh, what happened there and what you saw on your screen. We're not trying to hide anything, but you can't talk about it. And the explanation would probably be like, oh, there was probably some like, you know, classified high tech shit. It's like, no, do you think yeah. every other day they were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, fellow, you know, air traffic controllers of Cleveland, remember to zip it up before you hit the bars tonight. <laughs> like, no, they, they, there's nothing. They're just organizing traffic in the air. It's not a conspiracy, you know, heavy job, I wouldn't think.